Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Doug. This is our podcast about anything and everything off road. Still no rally cars. I don't know why I point it out each week when we don't talk about rally cars, but <laughs> there is an all wheel drive blue wagon that somebody, I don't know how it's arranged on your guys' screen, but on my screen, that yeah. car. <laughs> doesn't yeah. matter. It's an all wheel drive be wagon. Very mistreating it. <laughs> So uh, we're going to launch quick into industry news real fast. Uh, Rivian has beaten the Cybertruck. <laughs> so not, as a surprise to nobody. No, like nobody. 100% we all knew it was going to happen. It's just, I still, there's only one Cybertruck. It's a concept. The only other large scale one you see is the large version clay model. We'll point that out every time we talk about this. But really, we want to talk about the fact that Rivian is now producing customer vehicles. Not just proof of concept, like actual tangible things off yeah. the production line wonder when r1s will actually yeah. start showing up so based on my research it was later um it was like late spring coming like, 2022 okay. so no, still uh, before cybertruck yeah if, if it happens in the next five years it'll still be before cybertruck like <laughs> it's some cybertruck skeptics here huh oh yeah. um, where's the roadster Where's the semi? Like, where's like um, roadster any, any day now? Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's coming. It's just <laughs> part, part of me is like, I love the idea of electric vehicles, but it, like my day job was in commercial construction. And I 100% know as a country, we're not set up to have everyone plug in a vehicle at night. Like, I want all of it to happen though. Yeah, no, me too. And I'll tell you the other thing I was on a road, I did a road trip across the country. And uh, you know what I didn't see a lot of? It's Teslas, you know? In so the middle, not a, yeah. Not a very practical thing to drive. Across. <laughs> yeah, I know you can theoretically, but it would have probably added in mm. two days. I, mm. I feel like every time I, so I'm in Kansas City. So like every time I drive from Kansas City to Denver or we went to Montana this summer, there's at least one. Yeah. Like it's always in like remote Utah <laughs> yeah. or remote Wyoming or it's crossing Kansas with the rest of us. I'm just like, but I, I don't know where you're hooking up. Is the rate at which the number of charging stations increase is going to be equivalent to the rate at which electric vehicles get produced? Or is it going to be suddenly like, oh God, there's nowhere. Like there's literally nowhere to charge because it's going to be 50 cars lined up for five stations. Because on the Merritt, the Merritt Parkway here, there's, you know, there's two mobile stations between Stanford and where the Merritt ends and goes into New York. There's like five stations and there will be cars like li literally yeah. lined up through the I've gas station. I've seen those pictures. It's the same here in Southern California. I've seen those pictures, after, especially after like holidays, Thanksgiving, like 20 cars lined up. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. oh, that's not a feasible and I, I saw, situation. I saw like a scathing post today that was like, filled my gas tank in a minute and 34 seconds. Yep. Where, you can't do that, can you, Tesla? Like, I don't think anyone is expecting that. But, you know, I'm, I'm hoping mind? there's some thought leadership behind charging stations. I know Ford, doesn't Ford have a deal with Electrify America? Mm -hmm. So ho hopefully there's something going on there. I Somebody's going to start talking to the power companies eventually, hopefully. Not just like setting up the stations, but like, how are we going to actually produce enough juice? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, I, I'm sure I've referenced it on the show before. It always makes me think of the scene in Armageddon where Billy Bob Thornton tells them their plan to how to get rid of the asteroid. And Bruce Willis reaction is like, that's the plan. Like mm -hmm. that, like you're NASA, you're supposed to have a room of guys thinking shit up and another yeah. room of guys thinking shit up to I back mean, them up. Like the, the reality is there's no room. There's no first room, there's, let alone a second room. Right. Maybe it's three executives. Like, right. Well, that was a great movie. <laughs> I need to rewatch that. The sad part is, is that's my reference like all the time right now. Just for life, <laughs> just for like, because people are like, no, there's a, uh, we're not going to get into the conspiracy theories, but they're like, there's all this other stuff going on. I was like, no, there's no people thinking of anything right now. They're just <laughs> only thinking about themselves. Like, hmm. right. this is the problem I generally have with conspiracy theories. Like, the concept of all the, this whole group of people trying to do something like, behind 9 11, a government covered up. Well, think about the sheer number of you can't get the government to not talk about anything. <laughs> Even a few people, mm -hmm. you can't get any automakers, can't get people who have a pro, an interest in the profit of the company not to spill secrets. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. How, yeah, I just, sorry, <laughs> didn't, I didn't mean to yeah. talk on a tangent. I don't know if conspiracy theories are a place we've gone on this show yet. <laughs> I definitely, we've definitely not done conspiracy theories yet. 
no one has said a letter of the alphabet on the show yet so (laughs) um Mm. so ruby can launch the truck i I said what's the over under on the years before we see cybertruck i still think it's i think you set the bet at five no way it'd be sooner than that it's sooner than that if it's going to happen it'll be sooner than that and if not it's just hasn't it been dead two or three years since the concept came out yeah, but they said it would be the end of this year. So they're only they've only pushed it, I mean, indefinitely, but I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the end they of this year. Okay, your statement there was they've only pushed it indefinitely. <laughs> well, they didn't announce. They said didn't they say 22, but that could mean December 31 or 22 and it might. <laughs> it might. I mean, they're building the factory still, right? They're still built. Well, yeah, the factory uh... in Austin is still being built. Um That's a problem if the factory's not done. But like you gotta get that done first i'm trying to f- i can't i can't even find a date that it was like i revealed. you haven't like even started 19. second concepts for or new concepts for testing like it was revealed in november of 19 because right. i was coming home from the la auto show because they did it to try to steal the thunder from the la auto show and i remember driving home that night i mean they, was, they made some thunder that night they sure yeah. did like, yeah watching that glass shatter yeah right right <laughs> Speaking of thunder, ooh, we've gotten good at segues. Lightning, Ford built a pre-production lightning. <laughs> That's that was a solid segue, Ross. Like, thanks. I'm, I'm proud. So thanks. yeah, pictures pictures came out, right? Pictures came out. There's a lightning uh, coming off the line, uh, eerily similar to the picture of the Rivian coming off its own production line. So if anybody was one? wondering. The Ford, no, the Ford was, the Rivian was blue. The Ford was Ford, silver, galaxies, whatever they call it. I heard but, someone refer to the Rivian as a cartoon Smurf truck the other day. <laughs> and I kind of liked it a lot. Like, I was like yeah. The headlights kind of look like Smurf eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just seems like a little Have happy you truck. Have seen one yet? Rivian? Yeah. I saw one at the New York Auto Show the year that it was launched. I haven't seen one in person yet. I saw yet, a but one driving around. I thought it looked great. I think it's cool. I'm so excited to review it. I can't well, wait. It's bigger. It's like a little bigger than a Ranger, but not quite full size, right? Is it, that right? I don't know anything, it's, but to me, it looks pretty big. If my memory serves right, it's closer to like a 1500 than to like a Ridgeline. Okay. But right, Ranger's Ridgeline size, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's, I don't know. I'm, so, I'm, I'm on board. I don't know, but if anybody's wondering, the electric pickup wars are now officially on. Boy, are they ever! It's so crazy. Where did well, this all come from? We got uh, we got a Hummer. We got a. Cyber- I forgot about the Hummer. It's How? crazy. That's coming soon. They say that, end of this year, and I, GM doesn't. It's not like Tesla. They're going to get it done. Well, and that's like my point of a Tesla being happening this year. Like we like we've seen multiple concepts of a Hummer, like testing high altitude, mm-hmm. like all yeah. I, I don't, it's not really high altitude testing for an electric truck, but like they were in Colorado. <laughs> like, <laughs> we've seen nothing from Tesla. Well, yeah. this, the company's not exactly known for its, its uh, thorough, rigorous testing. To be- <laughs> True. So- the, I mean, the number of times uh, I've almost been run into by one yeah. is that three now. It's, it's actual oh. numbers. <laughs> I am curious what, I mean, they obviously have to make modifications to the truck for it to be production ready. I- it was, you know, when I, I reviewed the Hummer, the, 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 the static Hummer, maybe a year ago, I don't remember. And, and, and I was told at the time by all the Tesla people that I was an idiot for saying that it would be out before the Cybertruck. But it, there was just, it was, just it's, was then and still isn't far enough along to even be close. Mm-hmm. There's right. so many reg things that they have to do. There's going to have to be other iterations. Like, right. It's yeah. not fully baked. No. It doesn't even seem like things that hit the road are fully baked. So and the concept that it would come out in 90 days from now was like, <laughs> it, now it just seems, of course, ridiculous, but that's only because you, a year has gone by and we still haven't seen any more progress in that front. Yeah. So oh. this is just pickup truck news today that we're going over. <laughs> You're dunking on Tesla and, and talking pickup trucks. I'm um, excited for the cyber truck, by the way, I should say. I think it's, I think it's the ha- most heinous, the ugly thing I've ever seen, but I am excited for that. I just don't I- know when it's going to be here the prospect of the atv that rolls into the bed and charges in the bed (laughs) is one of the coolest things ever (laughs) i wonder like so electric atvs are starting there's an electric polaris ranger coming out next year that's going to be like 
rocket ship fast. And, you know, really, they showed it towing a Chevy 3,500 with like a 40 foot car hauler full of side-by-sides. And now I'm thinking like, what if there's an electric Polaris? Could you pull that into the back of the Ford with the, uh, yeah, probably power, sure. not power. Yeah. Band, yeah. Yeah. But, whatever they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So, um, yeah, I mean, the cyber truck is extremely interesting. It's, uh, it's certainly gotten people talking and that's what it takes. The last thing yeah. we need is a faster ATV. It's an easier way for 17 year olds in the middle of the country to kill themselves. Uh, <laughs> it's also, <laughs> dude, it, it, it's either, uh, yeah. it's either an electric side-by-side ATV <laughs> or a shit box that they bought off the street. Like it's that's true. Like, that's have true. you met the Midwest in our trucks? Like right, 200 horsepower power. on side-by-sides now. 200 horsepower. On a 200 horsepower or 1700 pounds. Wow. That's mm-hmm. wild. Why even bother with a fun and, car? At that and Chris's favorite fact is that the roll cages are not meant to bear the weight of the machine. <laughs> that's good. I still don't, like, point? I don't know how they get away with that. No, I mean, like, I, I shouldn't say that because all, all kinds of companies get away with dumb stuff. They just have to say not rated for a rollover and yeah. they're complete. Like, there's an well, asterisk. The roll cage then make them all convertible. Oh my God. <laughs> Because then they literally would oh be my God. tons of deaths. Like they're not they're rated for roller, but they're doing some work. Like tomorrow <laughs> on UTV driver, how much more dangerous is a side by side without a cage? <laughs> Those things. I, when I lived in the South, there wasn't a kid I met who hadn't almost lost a finger, had to be life flighted. You know, his mm. buddy died. Whatever it was, it was like, well, oh my God! Like in oh. the industry, Andrew Collins. Yeah. like Andrew Collins. Example yeah. one, like yeah. or Exhibit A, like. Yep. yeah that scared the shit out of me yeah yeah i was scared the crap out of rightfully so <laughs> um but yep. it's a, another example i mean i don't know that many people who ride these things regularly and they all get injured all of them. <laughs> yeah I, that's the, it's me i haven't i've only injured myself on a quad I, i'm not i'm not i'm now jinxing myself because i'm spending the weekend in the woods on side by side so uh, only, it's it's only ever when I talk to, to Zach Bowman and Kevin Ray from UTA driver that I'm like, yes, I need to get these. <laughs> and then the rest of my life is like, no, I like, don't, <laughs> don't get them and don't let your kids anywhere near them. It's it's um, it's like on the matrix of danger of like, where can I slide in to not like do, have it be just dangerous enough that they're intrigued by it? but mm. just safe or like safe enough that I don't have, like we, my kids play sports. And like one of the kids last night on my oldest team, like got to hit the head of the fastball. Like it was not great. Like that's not like, great. No. Baseball yeah, supposed to be the non-contact rare. That's one. rare. Ba- baseball right. injuries, especially in like middle school, school that's, that's rare. Getting rolling out, dying on a quad. <laughs> that's like every well, afternoon. <laughs> in our The same, <laughs> they call it Tuesday. <laughs> the same right. kids group of friends, like two years ago, we were supposed to start the baseball season. And the day before the season, exact same thing happened a quad rolled over he was riding with the guy driving and fractured his femur and so he was oh, out God, for the whole year like yeah that's not a short recovery yeah yeah like, it's the same thing as jeeps though everybody complains that jeeps are unsafe and it's like what's the level of education and competence for the operator that's where it starts and ends it's no different than putting somebody a 17 year old in a mclaren you know like you can a, walk into a dealership my Hellcat. yeah there's we telephone a, poles everywhere. We need a yeah. health and safety department. We just don't have the enough. problem is that those quads are a lot more accessible. You know? Yeah, like you can get they one for however many thousand bucks on Craigslist. Yes. Well, and the the trikes have been coming back. Like people have been oh restoring the trikes and putting them back out. And really? what are you guys doing? Oh, man. Like, Jeff Henson was telling us at ATV Rider, which I guess should for this be called trike riders which just doesn't sound good but he said they're the numbers that they see on socials and on like clicks for the three-wheelers the atcs and everything are like higher than anything else no uh, what it's nostalgia you know yeah people are reliving their childhood the greatest social media post i ever did at lmc truck was a picture that said share if you survive this and it was people sitting in the bed of a pickup truck <laughs> the amount of organic reach i got off that i couldn't <laughs> i literally didn't have enough dollars in the entire marketing budget to get the same kind of That's reach funny. but it was probably a v8 american pickup truck and not a subaru brat correct 100 percent, yes like it was just it was like a ford 
slap side or whatever. And it was shared probably by many boomers who were like, wait, who needs these seat belts? We lived through this. 1967, it's... my grandfather drove me across mm. the whole state. <laughs> so the old Bill Ingvall joke, <laughs> like, we didn't wear seat belts. That was your dad's arm. Your dad's arm was your seat belt. Like, <laughs> That's going to help. Yeah. Oh, I may have listened to that. Didn't survive that. Yeah, we geez. learned a lot since then. Yeah. I was like, we have the scars to prove it too. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, sweet. So uh, do you want to talk about Tundra's being revealed? No, Ross? Tundra's being revealed. Uh, so by the time this show airs, it will have be been out. revealed. Yes. And by the time we record next, we'll be able to talk about it. We saw Tundra. No. Okay. Yeah. I Tundra didn't. looks great. Anyway, it does look great. Uh, and Dan dug into the suspension on it and he Dan was did, like, yeah. it's really good. It's really good. It just doesn't look really good. It's been 13 years. I spent a week in the current model year Tundra a couple months back. And I mean, it, it's in a vacuum, a great truck, but every time I got in, I was like, oh my God, I remember climbing into one of these in 2008 right, right. and thinking right. it was Dude, amazing, but it was 2008. This. I agree. Get this. I'm walking the dog the other night and a neighbor of mine has bought a new Tundra. <laughs> the cool you- old body. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> it's like people are still going in and, you know, buying forerunners over MSRP. Yeah. Like, that's you, you know. But- but at least those are cool, you know, the cool the TRD cool pros, factor. They got all the tires and all that. Yeah. I'm like, damn, this dude, like, did he look at anything? Like, did he, he could have talked to me? I don't know him, but like, <laughs> he could have talked to me. <laughs> okay. But in all fairness, if you want to go to a dealership, buy a vehicle, like buy a pickup and drive it for 10 or 15 years until the next Tundra's out <laughs> and not, <laughs> not have any problems. <laughs> I will admit his, pre- his previous truck that was always in his driveway was the old body style Tundra, the one that ended in 07. So maybe mm-hmm. that's his plan, but it's not like they're deals right now because of the chip shortage. Like you're paying stick. Yeah, mm-hmm. Everything. No, there are no <laughs> deals. Wow. They don't exist. Especially on anything with TRD on it. Yeah. So, Oh, by the way, I, I saw a TRD off-road RAV4 tonight. Oh, I'm really? So sorry. I didn't. I mean, I knew it existed. I just hadn't seen one on the road. I was like, somebody paid for that. That wasn't a press view. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, there was one left on the lot. That's why. They're like, like, yeah, it might have been like. That, that's every- how we sold hybrid Cayennes when I worked at Porsche when they first came out. It was like they, we didn't have anything else. People are just like, all right, you get that one. <laughs> better than somebody, nothing. In the in the conversation about Smurf trucks being Rivian, somebody referred to a Cayenne as a potato with eyes in the same thread the other day, and I was like, like when the Cayenne first came out, I was like, that's kind of harsh but accurate. Yeah, it did, it I think a Panamera yeah. is more potato with eyes. The first gen. <sighs> Things I'm not fitting all my kids in. <laughs> no, <laughs> chop their heads off. Because um, I mean, there were only four seaters in the first gen. Right? Yeah, true. True. Well, you could fit the kids, just not yourself or your wife. Right. Right. Um, right. Okay, so final bit of industry news is that the thing we all knew was going to happen the Bronco Raptor apparently leaked in the Ford order guides. I'm going to share so, the images. Yeah, the images. I, I mean, all I have is camo. It's it's camo, but it, it looks absolutely enormous. And, you know, this picture obviously doesn't come with any bearing of the order guide. This was like a separate release. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of suspension droop. Uh, there's a very nice little smiley face going on on the front end of that camo. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, 37s, we know it'll be probably, you know, Goodyear, uh, Wrangler, not Wranglers. Um, yeah. Fox Live valve suspension, which is, you know, it, it monitors uh, jounce, rebound, and compression and everything faster than pretty much anything else can. Uh, what were the other things? I mean, they're going to upgrade the suspension hardware and it's going to be wider. It's pretty wide already. Yeah. I saw so, uh, uh, a Bronco for the first time parked next to a JK. Um, did I have the show notes up too? Yes. Um, yeah, I thought good. I did. <laughs> I, it's, uh, it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> everyone can now know where we're going. Um, but I, uh, the picture, I, or I took a picture because they were parked next to each other at my kid's baseball game. And I was like, hey, thanks, guys. Um, and did it? I was shocked at how much wider it looked like the Bronco was. Like it was substantially wider. Mm-hmm. I saw a black four door soft top base trim Bronco pulling out of caffeine and carburetors the other day with the uh, 
the steelies and it, it didn't look good gotta say yeah the the not if they're not well specced the bronco kind of looks a little meh yeah <laughs> which is, i think i i think part of that is because when they first showed it it was you know everybody you know that orange one that everybody saw the two door set with mm-hmm. the giant tires with the cutouts so, like, in the doors yeah right and so since then like if you're not seeing something with pretty big tires and some big arches and it's a little disappointing. The steely one is de- is definitely a little disappointing. I think the four door is not the most attractive to begin with. The two door is definitely the more attractive of the two. Yeah, so that's generally that. true though. Was that this Holman is, who said this that? Is true. What? I think Sean Holman from Motor uh, Motor Trend and Truck Show podcast. He had the exact same stance on it. He's like, uh, the two doors is the one to get. It's way more attractive. Oh yeah. The but belt I mean, line rises on the four door, and the back window is like really not a lot. But the thing is, nobody wants a two door. And the history has shown us that nobody on the planet, every two-door SUV in the history of time has failed, with the exception of the Jeep Wrangler, which has basically failed because now 80% of sales are four-doors. And I try to yeah. explain this to people and they say, why don't, why don't people make two-door SUV, whatever it is? Because it will fail. They all do. It will. It will. None and of them work. I mean, the three of us grew up in like the prime era of two-door yeah, SUVs. Totally. Um, two-door Tahoes. Two-door, two-door Tahoes, Tahoes, Yukon GTs. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, we got I mean, explore the Broncos of the, the late Broncos. 90s. Bronco was... 2, the Explorer, the Explorer's I, yeah. my family owned two two-door Explorers. Really? Is that the Explorer Sport? Was sport. the two-door? Sport. Yeah, you get yeah. them in a manual like they were they were cool when you were kids, you know. Is well, the girls I went to college with had one. I had a Via Cross. Mm. Via Cross. Yeah, the Via Cross was the worst thing I've ever owned and I I still I miss it. It was honestly the worst vehicle I've ever I've ever had my name on the title for, and I miss it every day. <laughs> no, they were cool. It was really cool. It just rode like a dump truck. <laughs> yeah, they don't ride well. They ride like Jeeps. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, arguably worse. Yeah. At least the one really? I had. I don't know. Yeah. It it sits on the bump stops. It only has downward suspension travel. <laughs> I, I don't know how to compute that. If you take it off the ground and lift it the suspension droops right but it but doesn't it can have literally not it only has like like 20 percent upward compression <laughs> that's why it corners like unbelievably well for a, a so if four-wheel you drive SUV. did it you could get some more upward yes. travel okay and good luck finding a company that sells lifts lifts for a, vehicle. For a very small yeah trooper you, you buy a trooper lift and you know cut like pickup points huh so I'm not going to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's the news. That's the news. You want to go through your just just jump to Pathfinder. Just I'll jump to through. Pathfinder. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll touch on C8 very quick. I have the C8 right now, huh. and it is com- obviously nothing related to off roading whatsoever. Even though I do owe Bowman a picture of it going down a dirt road, yeah. which I'm planning to do on Sunday. Um, the C8 is. An interesting vehicle um but i, I won't it it <sighs> shook itself on cold start it shakes on a cold start like it, it rocks literally forward. rocks the car back and forth if you use a remote start and it is obnoxiously loud and it is not particularly attractive but it is so much car for that much money yeah. yep. um my friend okay. one of my best friends came over he's got a modified c5 that is like I think it's like just shy of 450 at the wheels and this is still significantly faster and it's, it's comical, you know, with that a warranty, it, with a warranty. Yeah. Yeah. The 20 year old C5 is not warranted. It um, handles well. It's like, it's, I'm like blown away by how good that car is, but I agree with all your complaints. And I had yeah. a few more, honestly, I, I rented one on Turo mm-hmm. in Florida. And um, there was one time where I was cruising along and the gauge cluster said I was listening to one song. The nav screen said I was listening to a different song. And my phone said I was listening to a song I was actually listening to, which was a <laughs> third complete. Okay. <laughs> and that was, was that a 20 or a 21? Because, uh, you know, this was a while. This was at the end of last year. So it must have been, it must have been a 20. Okay. Yeah. I had some weird glitchy stuff happen too with the electronics. But I, but I, this is, I would still get it. Like if I was in that world, like I don't even care. I, was so I just, cool. I, I just can't begin to fathom what a Z06 is going to be like for yeah. like 130 or 140. Yeah. Um, but the build quality is absolutely terrible. There, there's gaps big enough where the convertible closes 
on the like plastic panels on the roof panels, I could put my phone between it. Totally, but it's better than it's better than it used to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> better than it used to. <laughs> I know. I I had a C six Grandsport and that was not a good car in build quality, but it was right. so very fast. And, you know. Well, that's the thing. That's how they get away with it because they just make the the quality is not the best, but damn, is it fast? It's mm-hmm. And it's cheap. It's cheap. cheap. It's cheap. <laughs> this one wasn't cheap. This one's ninety four. That's so. But in that world. 94 is not that bad like I, the amount of times that we've had to move dollar price points for us mm-hmm. on the show if like perspective like yeah 50 geez isn't that much anymore like, right no it's not you know the average new car with all this covid stuff the average new car is now forty four thousand dollars. 44 shut the front 44. door like 43 what? 750 oh man crazy? so i'm driving I... the brz the other day because i had the new brz the other day and, I'm, and that's 28 and i'm like you know that's a lot of to me that mentally it seems like a lot of money but actually that's not a lot of money. Crazy cheap. Wait, was it like 2010 when the average price crossed 30 and everybody like, went, whoa, 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 Holy whoa. crap. Yeah. And now we're 44. 40 plus. 28 for the BRZ, I was a kid, 24 was like a nice five series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was- yeah, it was like an LS400 or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> My 94 Land Cruiser was like 54, I think. Yeah, that's about right crazy right yeah it's wild so anyway so that's <laughs> now those land cruisers are 190 yeah, 90. yeah that that land cruiser yeah. is now 45 yeah um yeah okay. that same one is still selling for 54 and a new one's 100 <laughs> dude that i, I yep. sold a year too early i just oh did a lot, a lot of people would tell you just tell me that but you know what the thing is you would have sold six months ago if you had seen the prices start to rise you know what i'm saying yeah. like mm-hmm. you, no one really held on to the right time and now the only guys who are selling them are people who bought them six months ago and are like i can still get more right well, like, like they're paid high i have to get out they're almost yeah. praying they can get more yeah. <laughs> and they right now they can that market's insane mm-hmm. it's gonna happen in the 100 series mark my words it is or is i don't I think doubt is. that yeah i don't doubt that because there's only a very limited supply of 80s yeah, right. And you know, when I, t- 10 years ago, there weren't like 80s were everywhere and now they're not. And so they sell for 50 and mm-hmm. 100s are now everywhere. We should get a warehouse of hundreds. Should. Where? <laughs> 10 years, that car is going to be just the same. Like, damn, those guys, I'm in the right area now. with the most land. Just let me know. We'll, we'll find some <laughs> yeah, land. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we take out um, a million dollar business loan. Okay, what's it for? I'll get a shed. Land cruisers. Oh, story, I don't know, Jonathan, uh, Moore, Jonathan Moore, Moore, year old Toyotas. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, there are definitely people around the Midwest that are doing that right now. I've seen collections yeah. and yards. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Ross, so, you were yeah. going to tell us about this Pathfinder. Vehicles that should not be collected. Nis- <laughs> the new Nissan. The Pathfinder. new ones? <laughs> the new ones, yeah. So, the Pathfinder, it is deliberately designed to look more off-roady and is it it you know it has quote unquote hardware there's no like low range transfer case there's no chunky tires or anything it's just it they tried to un minivan the crossover oh, yeah um I, um, I I wish I had better things to say. Doug, have you spent time in one of these yet? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. You liked it, really? Okay, <laughs> so it, but I liked it as a crossover. Like if you're gonna you're gonna say it wasn't a good off roader. I agree. I mean, it was. Mm-hmm. I think it was just as good as Palisade and Highlander and all that. But it's it's nothing more than that. Like I, it's a it's a dull crossover. But it's, mm-hmm. I think it was a good as a as a dull three row family crossover. Yep, yep. That, and yeah, and that's where you know it's great at that. And yeah we're looking at it in a very different lens from the person that just walks into a dealership says, I want a Nissan. I want a crossover with seven or eight seats and I want all wheel drive. And that's it. Um, You know, this one had everything. It was like, it was just shy of 51, which is, you know, 50 is the new 30. So it is what it is. Um, I really, I did. And we'll get to that. Just wait. Okay, sorry. So I, I really like that. It's not a CVT anymore because that absolutely killed the old one. The, you know, the new nine speeds, good. The V six is still good. Mm-hmm. The interior's fine. You know, it'll like handle all of the drinks and goldfish just fine. I, I will, I will point out that white is not the color for kids. No, no, no. no it's not. Um, it does, you know, like make it classier though which isn't something that a Pathfinder set for really been able to say before. So I hooked the trailer up to it and 
didn't drive it much. You know, I, I hooked it up just to see like, cause the trailer with, you know, the, the tires that we have on it in the box and the winch up front, it's, it's almost 3000 pounds and, and the Pathfinder is rated to tow six, which in the, the realm of crossovers is like, just, I don't think there's anything that can tow more than that. You know, the ascent and the, um, Oh God, I do this every time. What's the Volkswagen? That <laughs> list. See how much I like. I've driven four of them. That's how much I like it. I can't even remember the name. Um, they're rated to tow five. So this is rated to tow six. And I was like, okay, so it should be able to tow 3000 pounds. No problem whatsoever. Uh, there was a lot of forward and backward motion that I didn't like even at low speeds, but the biggest problem. So when you're towing and you have backup sensors, <laughs> You would think that when you put the vehicle in reverse, even when it's in tow mode, it would, if not turn the backup sensors all the way off, at least shut them off so that the backup sensors and the backup auto brake weren't fighting with each other. So I put it in reverse and started backing up and I had my brother in the passenger seat and, you know, like was moving maybe two or three miles per hour. And the thing came to like a full jerking automatic, you're running over a child stop. <laughs> and we like stopped for a minute and, you know, said, okay, maybe it was a fluke and started backing up again. And it did the same thing again. I did the same thing again. And like went through every menu, tried to disable every single thing. Wow. And there's no way to turn it off. And a little research shows that this is a, a real problem, which Interesting. it took, you know, 10 minutes to back up like a 25 yard driveway, because once the speedometer goes past one mile per hour, it auto brakes and oh. comes to a, a full stop, like park stop. And that was severely disappointing. And, uh, wow. like it, good news, quite is embarrassing. That tells you how much they think that their customers are going to be telling. Yeah. 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 So, so the, I have no rating is mythical uh, or like it can it can theoretically tow that way going forward it just takes a very long time to tow it going backwards going forward or in neutral, on <laughs> or in neutral. so i have an email into nissan i'm hoping to hear back and you know and have some kind of reasoning rationale or at least like a thank you for making aware us aware of this we're gonna bring that into the next round of no software. one's ever backed a trailer before no we back the Boat trailer up with don't my exist. dad's 2500 in the same spot probably every two weeks and it does it in like less than 30 seconds yeah so wow. time for that. what a weird thing it was a really really strange experience and you know i'm looking around in the neighborhood going okay who's watching me who thinks i can't drive <laughs> <laughs> which when you are backing a trailer there's always a spectator right usually with their phone Right. There's also uh, a reason that the mailbox has been moved four feet to the left. So, <laughs> is that because somebody put it there, or somebody was like, "Fine, we're moving this." Let you think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic. Uh, anyways, that's that's all I got. Uh, I think I talked I about my like, update last week, so I don't. Doug, think hold on, sorry, Doug. It. What's that? I actually like that car for for a fa boring family crosser. I thought it was pretty good. I mm -hmm. thought it was just as competitive as any of the other ones. Yep. But I I think if you're towing or off roading or anything, it is certainly would not be anywhere near my first choice. And Armada is not much more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're serious about towing, you want that. How? Yep. What's the um, transmission in a Highlander? It's not a nine speed, is it? Eight speed. It's only an eight speed, so it might be. I don't know why Highlander's rated for five. I know that much because I, I just wrote an article about all of this. No, I was just, I was just thinking about like engine transmission setup. Like if it's mm. a nine speed transmission, it's probably the most gears and family SUVs of, the, of that size. And it's a good motor. Doesn't the Explorer have a 10? That would make sense because isn't that the Ford Chevy to the internet co design? I don't know. Sweet both type. Guys, you guys pay attention to this because you're thinking about towing and, and yeah. Of, you know, oh. I found that the consumers generally don't. That's not. It's not a commonly thought about topic. Oh, they don't. Sense. They don't care. Except the CBP. I talked to normal people, civilians as I call them, who really hated that. CBP. Civilians. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> that. And my, my dad hates the uh, touchy accelerator and my mom's Subaru Ascent. Really. Yeah, he despises. He, so he's like, much thought goes into touchiness of accelerator. 
there was a thought for a long time in the 80s and 90s that Americans liked, you know, like a, a nice feel of power the moment you tap the throttle. And so a lot of car companies would engineer them like that. It blows me away how much thought goes into that simple thing. Mm-hmm. Really? Creep. Yeah. Oh, I hear about it all the time from people, huh. from automakers and, and from people. That's so interesting. Because that's, that's like my dad's only complaint about her car. He's like, it's too twitchy. It says it, he says it all the time. Interesting. Huh. It's interesting. Even in like eco mode. So anyway, so the, the no Explorer does have a 10 speed standard. Let the record yes. show. Sweet. So, Sweet. Yeah. so Chris, what do you have? Nothing. Literally nothing. No. I still, I still can't. I, every time the front lower balance on the Suburban scrapes a curb, I'm like leveling kit. <laughs> but it, I could also just take the balance off. It, you can. The answer to your question is you're going to literally, it'll, Lose half a mile per gallon if you take the balance off. You lose half a mile per gallon if you put a leveling kit on it. And if you do both, you'll lose one mile per gallon. <laughs> so I'll go from maybe almost seeing 20 to maybe almost seeing 19 on yes. the highway. That's not so bad. That's, That's really not, not so that bad. bad. <laughs> like, no. Yes. No. So it sounds like I'm doing both. Uh, actually, the, there's like four little hex screws that hold them on on the bottom. Uh, for the, the balance thing? Mm-hmm. I made a uh, 20 miles per gallon is crazy in that car. Considering <laughs> what is that thing way? The day I put up a video with a 96 Suburban, and um, those got 11 or 12 like on a good day. Mm. You know? Was it the mm. white one? It was green. It was green. Oh, okay. It's on the site. It's, it's some guy selling it. So, but that old Vortec, I mean, there's no thought paid to, there was no cylinder deactivate. Like that's, that no. wasn't thought of at the time. Nobody the C8 cared. shuts down four cylinders half the time when in normal mode. <laughs> Like cruising this around is where we four-cylinder Corvette. Yeah, no, uh, I, I watched the um, I watched the suburban video a couple hours ago, yeah. and I was like waiting for you to say it, and then as you were driving, you're like everybody, somebody or everybody knew knew somebody that had one of these. It's like every circle that, that car and the third gen forerunner. It's like impossible to find somebody our age who didn't either have one or their buddy had one or their aunt had one or whatever. Mm. Like my wife grew up in one of those suburbans. Um, everybody that experience was universal. We, we had three GMT 400 Tahoe's and a Yukon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're keeping them in business by yourself, man. Yeah, my everybody dad's was, friend worked for GM. There wasn't anything else to get at that time that could even come close to doing all that stuff. And now a lot of those families buy GLSs. That that, that I think that car GLSs. actually cracks that a lot. Yeah, because people there were rich families who bought Suburbans yeah. because there wasn't any other way to get three rows of seats in a SUV. And then GL and GLS showed up and it was like, okay. And then X7 showed up and all these but other- But you know, not Escalade or Denali. I think that, well, even then, you know, in the mid nineties, there was still no escalator to not like you still were stuck in a suburban. Yeah. Time. But, um, th- you know, it was interesting. I, I, one of the things I learned that blew me away the most was from a former GM guy who came to work for us and I worked at Porsche. And he said, the, the people who buy suburbans and the people who buy escalades, you'd be surprised how little crossover there, the people who buy escalades want escalades. The people who buy suburbans want suburbans. Neither really want that much to do with each other. Suburban buyers think the escalade is too showy. Escalade buyers think that the suburban is just a for poor you know, people. boring <laughs> suburb car. The utility peasants. truck. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, suburban, you can still get it with like rubber floors. And like, you can... Right. Really? Oh, yeah. I think I so. Huh. Base, spec, base spec suburbans all day long if you want. Oh, yeah, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, I I also just watched that video that I mean we had Musto and Alana on the show like a oh month my ago already. God, the and episode I watched one was so episode good. one of that suburban they have amazing. Yeah. That truck is so good. It made me it made me sad that we didn't get them closer to the time of the release of the series. No. It's so <laughs> to good. Up those like three weeks early. Yeah. Oh well. <sighs> It was fun. They're still searchable on the internet. Somebody's going to find it. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Yep. So, all right, Doug. So uh, where do you want to start? Yeah. How's the the Defender fleet doing? Uh, Yeah. So I have two, you know, I get two of these things. My green one, the new one, I get 22,000 miles. My dealer tells me it's the highest mileage one they service. Although I was just pricing one because one came into the site today. One was submitted to the site today and I was just pricing one and I was looking and there are like four for sale on Auto Trader right now with over 30,000. The car came out a year ago. I'm like, who are you? I drove, I drove across the country four times. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, there's someone who's driven across the country six times. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of driving. Just, I mean, oh, look at that. It's a good highway. Like, I like mm-hmm. it on the highway a lot. Like, oh, yeah. It's, 
in all fairness, I've looked at GSF prices a few times recently, and there's a few on car gurus with like 210,000 really? miles. Well, hey, yeah. if you were going to do it in a performance sedan, that's yeah. the one. Yep. <laughs> I wouldn't so, want to put 200,000 miles on an M5. Seriously, that goes well. But all right, so so the uh, so the green ones issue free mostly. Well, like, the, sunroof live, live good life. the sunroof hasn't worked most of the time I've owned it. Um, but other than that, it's good. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It's also dented and scratched to hell. I've offered it like crazy, and I just have not really cared about it because I just plan to own it until it's not worth much. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's how, like rough. How many it's miles are on the yellow one? The yellow one I bought was sixty three, and it just hit eighty. It hit eighty. Okay. Months, so yeah, hey, you'll be at eighty in the green one soon. Yeah, <laughs> like right. four years. Yeah. That's right. It won't be long. Yeah. I mean, I did twenty in the first year. Uh, I haven't even had it a year, honestly. So I've been because mm -hmm. I drive it every summer in Nantucket. So that's eight thousand miles, just period, right. every right. year. Wow. Um, and then okay. I do, I do, I drive it around town and stuff. What's um What's protocol for getting on the beach in Nantucket? Because now I'm looking at these pictures and I'm like, it's not that far. <laughs> you get right. No, you got to get a permit. Um, but it's not. You can just, anybody can get one. You can just pop. It. It's 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 a hundred bucks to go on certain beaches, and then there's a second beach that's a little more remote that's like two hundred bucks. Um, but getting to the island is hard. Getting in there in the summer, you got to get a you got to book the ferry like months and months in advance and all that. Oh wow, well. hmm. yeah. But um, you just fly across. There's, Maybe not. There's not a lot of yeah. places in the northeast where you can drive on the beach. That that's a thing in like Florida and Texas, like pla places where there's a little less rules. But in New England and the northeast. Mm. You can't do that very often. No. It's a pretty cool setup. And you can do it on Nantucket for a mile. Really? Yeah. Huh. You'd have to look into that. Yeah, there's there's like two beaches on Long Island where you can do it. And I think there's one spot in Cape Cod, maybe. There's only two beaches on Long Island that you yeah. can do that? Yeah. 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 And you have to and have like a packed. fishing That's, permit. The other thing is they get super, super packed in the summer because it's, it's a rare thing. Whereas on Nantucket, I mean, I can, July 4, I'm sitting on the beach with, I can't see another person. And that's, that's pretty awesome. Special. Yeah. That makes okay. me, that makes me think of a uh, Chris at you joint off road. That's like building, he's built like 13 of those oh my God. Ford Econoline RVs with four by four yep. systems underneath them that's for a long crazy. Island. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the dream. I've actually keep thinking about this. Cause like what I really want is a car. Cause you saw those pictures. The reason those pictures exist with the two defenders is because I, I can't get all my friends. They come to this trip with me. And I can't get them all in one vehicle. And all I think is all I want is a car that can take all everybody to the beach. And the answer, I don't want to admit this to myself, but the answer is one of those bands. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> I will I give you Chris's one. email. Seriously. I will put you in touch with him. But I don't it's, want to, it's so uncool. It's, I mean, it is. No, cool. it's not. They're it's amazing. Cool. They're, they're cool. But like, I want like something that's, I want like you, a 10 passenger defender somehow. You, you know, know what you, oh, you need like one of those 70, uh, the 70 series Land Cruiser buses. Oh, the troopies? Yeah. No, no. I never even thought about that. That would be super cool. A troopie. So you can get troopies oh. from like Central America, left hand drive, fairly, left -hand fairly drive. easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm so beyond over right hand drive. I can't do that. Seven series <laughs> Land that Cruiser bus. But I saw, I saw there's one like, it's like an extended oh, hell bus yeah. version. It's like oh, yeah. um, <laughs> Arcana or something like that. A R K A N A. Um, it's an Australian based coach maker. So you'd have to import it, but. And this it'll probably is be right-hand drive. I thought about that. That's so great. That'd yeah. be great. There are companies that do them with Defenders too, but they're yeah. expensive as hell. That's shocking that a Defender would be expensive. Or, or you get one of those crazy Arctic truck abominations that they take people on tours with. I've thought about that too. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but like it's not a feasible thing. Like, I'm not going to do any of this except maybe a 70 series. Yeah. But like I was talking to a company because what I really want truthfully is a 200 series Land Cruiser, but a convertible. And I, I still don't quite understand why Toyota has not discovered that there's a huge market for those of us willing to have a nine seater Toyota Land Cruiser convertible. A huge I market. Feel, <laughs> a huge I, market. Hey, I would be one sale. Uh, I feel that they should address this growing need. <laughs> Look at that. That'll Thanks, be Chris. Great. Oh my God. You, this, this is my favorite, one of my that. favorite things on Instagram. It's Iceland car culture and it's oh. always on glacier tires and they're always huge yeah. passengers. Mm -hmm. The Iceland car culture Instagram is one of the great Instagrams that has ever existed. It makes, none of it makes any oh sense. That looks like what the is that? Blicken House boot. <laughs> That's like a home built, keep going. Yeah. These are great. <laughs> or you could get one of those, uh, one of the things that they used to go up a mountain. I forget what they're called. They're like on tracks. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I don't think Snowcat. See that? It's 80 series. That's almost boring. Like right, that's boring yeah, that's for tame. 
Another thing I love about Iceland is the fact that the entire country is able to exist with license plates with only two letters and three numbers. That's how small Iceland. There you go. Right? Whoa. Got another letter in there. Okay, so yeah. you spend time in a gym. That's that's perfect. Um, yeah. How, was it like okay? Was it good enough that if they brought it here, it people depends on would the price buy point. it? It's an interesting question. I think it purely depends on the price point. I have to say, I was actually a little disappointed with the driving experience. Um, right. It kind of sucks. But like, if it's sixteen or nineteen. I would, yeah, it would be awesome. Okay. But I fear that because after you get through all the regs and stuff that are required to join this market, you would be in the mid twenties, at which point I would much rather have a Jeep. I hate to say it because I love the gym. And I think it's the coolest thing in the world, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of, you kind of get why it's sold in some countries that like aren't as reg heavy. Right. Um, right. I love that car though. I think it's so cool, but oh. I think it's the best. It's like the best $16,000 off-roader I've ever been in. <laughs> yeah. And then 16 grand, you can still buy like an LJ Rubicon or something, which is yeah. probably better, but I don't know. Two door SUV. But being able to buy a, a new car with a warrant. I mean that it would be cool to be able to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But I really fear that once all was said and done, it'd be, even if they did it the cheapest they could somehow it was 23, 24. I don't think it'd be very appealing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be the it's equivalent rough. of like a, a totally stripped out FRS, you know, yeah. but yeah. with an engine, that's not that. Well, that's the other thing. It was, it's not powerful. It's just like rough. It's just, it's slow and not powerful. And the, the, the appeal of that car is in its cheapness and it's like basicness. Mm -hmm. But that only makes sense if you can get it at a price that works with that. Because what do Wranglers probably start in the twenties? I imagine twenty seven nine is. A so like if a two door Wrangler twenty four, I'm sitting here like, eh, I'd rather yeah, just strip. I get a convertible. It's a great screenshot. <laughs> Look at that color. It's like it, it's color. the perfect like Northeast or Chicago all year city vehicle. totally i have always said this that like a little i i've always felt the g-wagon is actually like a fantastic city car people think it's insane but the old g-wagons were narrower in width than a ford focus like they were perfect for manhattan you could go over everything because the roads are crap mm -hmm. and they're tight they're like small people don't realize that but they were small cars. yeah that well that's the thing about the bronco too the four-door bronco and even the four-door jeep to an extent are like they're they're not small you know yeah, yeah. they're like fairly sizable and then you look at stuff like people driving like Raptors around, you know, they're going to be driving Bronco Raptors around, but yeah. that's the two door Jeep is great. It fits everywhere. So insanely big. I don't know how people drive those and you see them in cities and stuff. And I'm like, Whew. there's a guy down my street that has one. I, I, I don't know. Genuinely it's, don't know. It's like a real thing. It's like, it's a big vehicle. Yeah, they're enormous. It's so silly. And so many people like lift them and do 37s. Yeah, right. It's so silly. Need more power and size. That's what you really need. Oh my god. Um, okay, there's a lot of places we could go here. So I think we should go to G wagon. G wagon. <laughs> yes, let's do G wagon. Okay. Now so. I've got to change the image that I had selected because I went with regular G wagon. But if we're going to Doug's oh. G wagon, I want that one. <laughs> I can wagon it up. Convertible, convertible power top, convertible. It's the greatest car I've ever owned in any capacity ever. Period. It's now, hilarious. I know, what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. This is the ugliest thing that I've ever seen. There it is. And it you're right. It's like a micro machine. You're right. And you know what I've always loved about this car? If you cover the first half of the screen, it looks normal because it looks like a regular G-Wagon. And right. then you're like, oh. <laughs> and you're like, oh, darn. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I realized that it was a powered top. This is the best thing about this car. The later G-Wagons, beginning in 96, the convertible G-Wagons were power tops. So, you know, Jeeps, I mean, I like a Jeep. I like my Defender. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with hoops and straps and zippers and whatever. This a horrible thing, pain in the ass. Right. It's a pain in the ass. So and what you end up doing is you take the top off once a season, you know, or whatever. If you have a garage, you take it off the spring and put it back on the fault. That's it. This thing, boom, top down, top down, 30 seconds or less. And 30 seconds yeah. <laughs> so great what? it's just like an sl you know it's it's just boom it's down and i'm driving along it's amazing it, I love that does it drive like a g-wagon yeah it drives just like a g-wagon except with a little bit less structural rigidity. <laughs> <laughs> a little floppy <laughs> well, it's, uh, the thing of the thing that i love about it is it's everything that a jeep is except it's much rarer and more special and it's mm -hmm. got a power top and it's like 
it's pretty nice. Like it drives, you put the top up, it's like a nice car. It, it's smooth and comfortable. And um, I just, there's, it, there's nothing it can't do. We, we went up to side the, pipes. <laughs> I wish I hate, I think that's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> we went up to Carmel and it was like up the coast and um, we're driving up PCH with the roof down. It's like this wonderful experience. And then we did this off-road trail through the Sequoias. And so we're off-roading now. And it's like, this is, there's no other car that can do all this. Like, this is so great. That's amazing. <laughs> I wonder what the budget version of, are there any other powered hard top convert? Well, well this, guess, is like soft top. this is a soft top. Oh yeah, sorry, soft top. But like- There are two, there are two. And they're both fantastic automobiles. The Evoke convertible. Evoke and the Murano. And the Murano. This is the company that I find myself in. <laughs> and oh, it's the land of, the land of odd. Of those. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm actually kind of a sucker for the Evoque convertible. And I know that's like blasphemy, but well, I love that they're cool. I think they're, I think they're interesting, but, you know. Oh, fundamentally terrible. <laughs> but like... <laughs> The best cars are fundamentally terrible. Right. You know? At least it's at least, you know, when I see them on the street, I definitely turn my head. Mm-hmm. Um the G Cab though, I think is the coolest thing in the world. I it's I just love it deeply. Now I, I admit openly that it's heinously ugly. I mean it's laughably bad. And it's worse with the top up. It looks like it's wearing a toupee. Like it's just a that's, oh, I've been, really? literally, that's what I've been searching for. Oh, for the my, last two yeah. minutes is trying to find one with the top up. Somewhere in my Instagram, <laughs> there's a picture of this. There you go. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Now you have to think to yourself, why are there two triangular windows? Well, because not a lot of thought was put in. This. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. it, it, it the top doesn't improve it. Is, no, the, no. is the third brake light to the side of the wheel? Yeah, try to find a rear picture. Oh, Jesus. The third brake light, because of the problem that you run into with us with a powered top or with the soft top, and Jeep had this issue too. You have to find a place to, to, so the third brake light sticks out like a, um, I don't even like almost like a vacuum cleaner insert. Like it goes, <laughs> it goes up and then, and then back. Like it's one of the uh, stupidest things you'll ever see. Uh, that's very seen. bizarre. It is so weird. I mean, it, it, okay. If I didn't know, I would be like, there's an alien scanning coming around the side here. Yeah. Most seriously. People ask me, there you go. Look at that third brake light. I mean, that's just embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is possibly the strangest thing i've ever seen this was a real thing the um they they made these and they were they sold them for unbelievable money and you'd be stunned at what these sell for now so the, they made a final edition in 2014 they only sold 200 of them and final edition g-wagon convertibles on the market today easily sell for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. whoa that's like g squared money i've heard 450 for Huge. some of the more holy shit stuff. Yeah. Think about that for a second. I mean, okay. So <laughs> you can justify it though, because if you I think this try is to a rationalize out what can emulate that driving experience and capability. Okay. That's still all the terrible. final editions. All the final editions had beige tops, which it's in horrible. my opinion makes it way worse. So much worse. <laughs> I was talking to a company recently and I was like, you know, if my top, I was talking to a company who deals in these. And I was like, if the top ever breaks, do they, are there others? He said, well, look, Mercedes still makes them for $14,000. He said, or there's another company that makes them. And the benefit of the other company is they're way cheaper and you can get any color you want. And I, was th- I told him, I said, you know, it's not attractive in the normal color. <laughs> what do you think I'm going to do? Get blue? Right. Like, this is it, man. Purple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, there's, everybody tries to, talk about what the perfect single vehicle experience is like so many people go to like rally miata you know like lifted miata or something like that but if you want the problem with off-road vehicles is that they generally drive terribly on the road right so it's kind of this is one that does it compared to my defender this honestly feels like i'm driving an s class i mean it's so much nicer um my yellow defender now, okay. <laughs> so your green one rides pretty good. So yeah, like, I, was, about it is, I had though. a moment there. <laughs> it drives not that different from the green. The thing about it is, though, it does check a lot of boxes, but it's so heinous that, like, <laughs> you can't, you can't, like, you know, it doesn't check that box, and that's kind of an important one. You have okay. to like be proud, prideful of. <laughs> that's similar to how I felt with the Via Cross. <laughs> right. 
Right. That's the problem. like, oh, I'm getting into that thing. <laughs> Looks good in the dirt. It does look, look good in the dirt. Beautiful, beautiful thing. The funny thing is, it's actually the most capable off road because of the G wagons, which the G wagon, as you know, is tremendously capable off road. The, well, this is even better because of the short wheelbase and mm, you still like over lockers. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's still the three lockers. Yeah. And so it's, you got all the capability yeah. of a regular one, but it's lighter weight and it's got the much better breakover. And I, there's a guy in LA who apparently has one of these lifted with like mud tires and stuff. I've thought about doing that, but um, I don't want to, I drive this daily. I don't want to do it to mine. No, it'll it'll make it drive way worse. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, sure. So they also made just hard top two doors. Yeah. Right. But not as long. They, the hard top two door wasn't once the four door kind of became the dominant one. The hard top two door kind of fizzled out in like the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. They made the convertible through 2014, believe it or not. They didn't sell it here. No, it was no. never sold. In it was country. never sold here. No, never. Mm -hmm. We only got the four door. That's, that's I mean, didn't they technically sell a convertible version of the uh, Mylock one? Yeah, yes, they did. And it's the same top. The Maybach no. one is the craziest thing in the world because the only reason they did, I, in my opinion, the only reason they did a half top on the Maybach one is because they had them. <laughs> they had them. They had it. A regular convertible. The Maybach one only has a roof over the rear seats. Oh. And the guys at Mercedes-Benz Classic Center told me the only difference is the top sits flatter. Yep. And there's no triangle. There's no crappy triangle window in the back. But otherwise, it is the same roof. You can see. That's the, hysterical. Yeah. Does it have the same weird brake light? Yeah. Hand? I mean, it looks like it. You I've, never, see? I've never just... been around it, but it looks like it does on that picture, right? Try and find another angle. Things also like walking on water in that rendering. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, which is laughable because it weighs 40 million pounds. And there's, it, oh, God. How much, everything. how much is yours why? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I would I, I know. guess like five. But I have no idea. Oh, Look at Jesus. That. That's Beautiful. horrendous. So the, only, the top difference is it, it doesn't have the triangle window in the top. And it sits a little flatter because they wanted to try to maintain a more flat roof angle. Mm. But what a horrid vehicle that one must have been. Oh, man. It does have fully straight back doors, though. Like a full-size vehicle. Yeah. 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 Still I mean, side pipes. Yeah. Right. That's, that's just horrendous. It's a fucking abomination. Oh, that Sorry. That car cost a million dollars. The Maybach one does? Yeah. They only made like a hundred or something insane. Uh, so. How many How many are there of yours? 2,600 with a power top. Yeah. But there's only 120 in the United States. <laughs> and there's only 12 of us that are legal in California. And it, Kendall Jenner has one of the other ones. So it's me, so Kendall, sorry. you know, us. <laughs> And then like 10 of <laughs> Talk about Venn diagrams of. Yeah, right. <laughs> Exclusivity. A G Wagon convertible. Um, There's yeah, so... I don't even know. Okay. So, speaking of things that cost a million dollars, you spent time in, was it Wagoneer or Grand Cherokee L? I did Grand Cherokee. I haven't done Wagoneer okay. yet. I'm really excited to. Have you so, done Wagoneer? I know. They did the launch like 10 minutes from me yeah. and I, I didn't get an invite and like a bunch of my friends went and didn't tell me. Robbie Thanks, Robbie. Without us. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. Um, but that thing's like a million dollars. Like oh, one of the vehicles that's run on the pressers is like 107, which is, yeah. you know, it's yeah. huge. It's a huge Very number. Expensive. And I'm kind of curious what it's going to be between, like I drove the Grand Cherokee L, a super nice spec Grand Cherokee L and it, was really nice and it was 69 and i'm i'm very curious to see how grand wagoneer is going to be able to differentiate itself and, and get itself mm -hmm. to 100 because grand cherokee i was shocked i don't have a lot of i don't have a lot of high regard for chrysler products generally and i was blown away at how nice that one was yeah i mean the current generation grand cherokee was nice when it came out yeah yeah in 2011 Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, speak of high regard for Chrysler products, I have a horror story I could tell you about what my parents are going through with theirs right now. Oh, um, with their old one. With they have a fourteen with like two hundred and thirty thousand miles on it, and it's a. Uh, you remember when they sold that lifetime powertrain warranty? Yeah. yeah. Well, they bought it, and uh, it's not really lifetime. Transmission's covered, but let's just say. The vehicle's been down since June, and the transmission still hasn't been delivered. Wow. Well, so I, I know there's supply chain issues. Anyone to 
take it to 230,000 miles. That's also true. They were, they were just <laughs> hoping that people would kind of give up at like 85. Uh, like, oh, this is already falling apart. Sorry. The problem is they never replaced the vehicle. The crisis, there hasn't been a new Grand Cherokee since then. So like no one really had a lot of incentive to go out and pick up mm-hmm. a new one. That's funny. Man, yep. 14 so, Grand Cherokee at 230, that's crazy. Did you try to yeah. get them into the Land Cruiser at the time? Or? I didn't. Um, I tried to... No, the Land Cruiser was too. They wanted to buy something new, and the Land Cruiser was priced out. But I'm yeah. I'm trying to get them into a GX after this. Yeah, you know. if they're yeah, you be better do it quick. Thousand miles. The A4 year. runner. You know. Yeah. God, four runner. Four runners well, are so insane. We're you're someone when you mentioned the prices. We um when people come with TRD Pros to cars and bids, I give them reserve at their sticker. Yeah. If for like twenty thousand. Uh, <laughs> so. In 2018, I bought a new Forerunner. I bought a TRD off road for 35 six. Sticker Which was crazy sticker, cheap. It's crazy. It, sticker by was almost 42, but I, I it was like it hadn't even come off the boat. And the guy was like, "If you want it, I'll give it to you at a huge discount." Blah blah blah. And I sold it at a profit. And that same vehicle now stickers for almost 46. Yeah. And it, it's the exact same thing. It's the same thing. They, ch- they changed the screen, and the TRD Toyota, Pro is like fifty four. Got to figure Toyota has killed it financially on those. It's like G wagon before it before the last one was redesigned, and they were selling them for like one twenty, and it was the same mm-hmm. car. <laughs> like Dude. Toyota is killing it. How many this. presidents has it been since the tooling was paid off? <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. It's Dude. crazy. That is so insane. That foreign situation is so insane right now. And I got to admit, like I look at them and I'm like, I want that. Like I know they're <laughs> expensive. I know you can't get one. I'm like. And I know they're kind of crappy, like, right? Like they have a metal key. They have a, a real parking brake. Like they're not, they're, all the tech is bad, but it's like, eh. yeah, <laughs> they're, they're charming. Right blue. Look at those tires. <laughs> mm-hmm. they're, they're charming in a way that I haven't found the Bronco to be yet. Mm. Yeah. See, I, I, I lean more GX. Fighting think, words. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I like GX is so heinously. It's oh, so yeah. bad. <laughs> Which, but not the new one. Oh, like the one and a half generations ago? Uh, 460? Yeah, the one that, right when they first came out with the 460, it was okay. But Mm -hmm. they they put the grills on it now and it's just not. Yeah, the the Predator grill exists and it's terrible. On the SUVs, I really find that grill to be offensive. I don't mind it on the sedans. I think it actually looks pretty good on the sedans, but it's small. It works okay on those, but like the LX with that grill is like one of the (sighs) ugliest cars. But like we look at it and in addition to it, you know, all the predator jokes and all that stuff. Like it, the first thing I think of is if you hit the front end on something off-roading, which is what you're supposed to do with these things, do you have to just replace, can you replace like the bottom two fins or do you have to replace the whole thing? (laughs) I mean, you got to figure you're replacing the grill, right? Right. And that's why I honestly wonder truly and honestly, because they're not going to do the Land Cruiser in the States next year, but they are going to do the LX, I assume, because it sells well. And I, I honestly wonder if they're gonna if some company's gonna come out with like Land Cruiser cosmetic conversion <laughs> kit to make, to make LXs look. Like, I would do that. I, I would. That's hundred percent gonna be a thing. Yeah, hundred percent. That's so funny. That's the only drawback of that LX. Like I love those cars and I love the two hundred and I like the two hundred LX. I just um, the Land Cruiser looks better and I like the understated yeah. thing. Of, you know, nobody yeah. really knows. Yeah, I should have bought a Heritage Edition at sticker and sold it at a profit yep. boy was that a mistake i was like you know what i'm gonna wait till the 21 heritages come out i'll get a three row and that'll be like the one to have and now they're like 10 over for a 12 year old car like no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> crazy. that's crazy 12 12 i thought those were like what year was was that oh eight or oh seven yeah oh eight yeah. was the first model year so yeah they're, oh, they're i guess they're 14 13 14 years old yeah, yeah. It's insane oh, God. Fuck. Yeah, because 100 is 98 <laughs> to 07, right? They make them last. That's really crazy. Parts of those generations. <laughs> That's so funny. What's, What's the shortest generation of vehicles ever gone? Like, full, is it is it one of the Toyota? Genesis products? No, oh, you know what it is? Kia Borrego 09 Kia Borrego. only. <laughs> oh I saw God. one of those the other day. Do you remember the, what was the, oh, uh, God. What was that? It's like Isuzu. the squarish one, right? The Borrego was a, it was a full size. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I saw one of these, but it came out like right when the recession hit and they were like, forget it. We're done. They, they left after one model year, which I don't know that I've ever seen before. But look at that beast. Those were sold to the V8. That is a, that, that is a V8. Cool, 
Well, they're most of them are six cylinders, but you could get a V8. And they're body on frame. That was kind of looks like the Subaru. <laughs> yeah, it kind of does. I get Honda a, Pilot vibes from the yeah, back. It, it wasn't. It didn't have any like muscular look to it, but it was a body on frame V8. They sold them in Middle East for like years. I swear, I saw one of these at like a Wendy's drive-through. <laughs> like I was stuck behind it, going Borrego. What? <laughs> Kia Borrego. Okay, what was that Isuzu? That was sold in like 2004. The Axiom. Axiom. Thank you. That the had the. Actor? Had, they had like a they had like a style to them. It was it was really yeah. just like a rodeo, but like a different look. You know, they like rebodied it basically. Okay, they got two model years out of that. <laughs> so, okay. who was the Via the Cross actor code. in the commercial? How long did Via Cross code. Via Cross was 2003 or something. No, it was 90. Well, they. They sold it a couple of years before in Japan. Yeah, that's right. And I want to say it was like 90, 97 to 01 here. Yeah, something like that. Mine was a 99. It wasn't Let's long. Via Cross yeah, was, was 97 to 01. Yeah. There was an Azuzu Axiom in a Spy Kids movie. Spy Kids movie? <laughs> remember that. I remember those movies. Yes, tie in or something. All these movie things. You remember when the James Bond movie had a Thunderbird in it? Uh, that 02 to 05. It was the Halle Berry one. Like the yeah, Halle Berry. I don't remember yeah. that. Because Ford, Ford bought it back from BMW and they, you know, because Ford owned Aston. So Aston. The Premier Automotive Group was, so Jaguar was in it and, and the Aston was in it. But Ford was like, hey, here's an idea also. Could you also include, <laughs> could you give us the, could you give us a Thunderbird? And they did. That came up, that car came up in one of our, uh, in the everyday driver group chat today and there was a discussion about the styling and you know not that it was generally too positive but the conversation turned to which of those modern retro throwback cars did it best was it Ford gt is the only good that, one that's Come not okay no no one. we're talking people like normal people cars <laughs> you're right you're 100 right you know, like, and that was really the only great 100%. retro of all those mid to early 2000s retro cars if the I prowler like, had a good engine it would have the been prowler, okay. yeah, the, actually that's that's the prowler was good but yes it, it, bad engine bad transmission but the prowler was like really cool looking i've always thought those were really cool still is open wheel street car like i saw like, what was that I what saw was that prowler at the uh hardware store the other day Oh God! Getting uh, did he have the getting, trailer? I don't know. He did not have the trailer. But <laughs> He's doing a Home Depot around with his with a Prowler. God. He was parked next to a uh, Nissan Frontier, and I almost took the picture wide enough and have been like, "Hey, look, a Frontier!" and just completely ignored. It. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really funny account. Just like, uh, just like you know, I, the, other, the other one of those retro cars that I thought was actually pretty good is the 05 Mustang. I thought that was a good. Bege- and it, honestly the mustang hasn't doesn't look that different now than it did in 05 like it was a strong retro redesign and it did pretty well i need, I need my yeah, internet hey. to be faster i just got to the yeah. doug 4 yeah. gt picture <laughs> there was a uh a hefner twin turbo 4 gt at caffeine and carburetors and it's just god psycho death machine it is a death machine that car is terrifying i i got it loose by accident right after i got it and almost crashed it I got a buddy who crashed one. There was there was a fatal in LA uh, two months ago um, in one. Really? Car. People are still dying in those, which is in crazy. Oh, yeah. Because those cars bad. killed a bunch of people when they first came out, but like yeah. people are still dying in four GTs. <laughs> How many of those did they sell? It's, they made 4,000 of them. Okay. And you, you know, the thing about that car is about 3,000 still have the plastic on. You know, not mm. that many people drove them. Uh, 4,000 so is almost the same number as Via Crosses that were built. <laughs> It's not rare. The Ford GT I think, is not rare. And the other thing about the Ford GT is they were all sold in North America. You know, mm-hmm. they, they sold, they exported like 200 to Europe. There was some weird pilot program, but that was it. They were all sold here. So they're not. The one one was Clarkson's, common. right? Clarkson had. Oh, one. yeah. Because he didn't have a good time with it. If you watch old Top Gear episodes, like you could watch it just being miserable. <laughs> I did a thing yeah. with James May and I asked him about all that. And he said, the thing about Clarkson's was, he said, I'll tell you because I was there. He said Clarkson had an, ins- an, an alarm and an immobilizer installed um, because his insurance company required it. Oh, no. And he, said, and he said the real problem that Clarkson had with his Ford GT was the immobilizer didn't work with it, and it constantly was giving him problems and breaking down. And he said it had nothing to do with the car. It was yeah. purely based ah. on, on that. And truthfully, it's, it's, that's been the most reliable car that I own. 
That's probably one of the simplest. <laughs> yeah, right. It's it is pretty simple. I, I don't feel not confident that a, any Ford dealer mm-hmm. could run it. I don't take it to a Ford dealer, but I feel like if I had to, I could. Yeah. Isn't it? It's one of the only vehicles that, like, if you modify it, the modifications like can be included in the price that you sell to the next person because they were so overbuilt. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you haven't right. ruined the car. Like right. it depends you on just added what modifications. Yeah, it does, does depend it. on what mods. Although almost everyone who has one of those did a short shifter, an exhaust, and a pulley and tune. But I've never mm-hmm. seen one that had some miles on it that they didn't do at least the pulley and tune. They, it was just so easy. And yeah, the, it was so overbuilt. The guys have like 2,000 horsepower in them. <laughs> you know, the runway like, cars are run. nuts. It's insane. So I'm driving around with 700 horsepower. It's, ter- it's still a it's terrifying. That's cr- crazy. But the, that style is perfect. You know, there was one of those at the show, and then there was one of the current it's still they're still building them right so yeah. technically still current Are they? yeah, yeah. Uh, they and done. it just doesn't Last have year. the same uh, presence doesn't even like scratch you know, the surface it's but a controversial topic i actually prefer mine but you could say i'm biased but i would swear I, even if i didn't know when I, I like a stick shift i like a. it was a big v8 simple car you throw it around mm-hmm. and it was a lot more usable. The new one is because it's a million dollars and it's so yeah. rough riding. And I don't know. It's, it's not my, not my it, world. Well, and it can raise and lower itself. Like it's a whole thing. There's so much complication. And you know <laughs> that in about nine months, there's no Ford dealer on the planet going to want to touch one of those, you know, oh, no, they'll no, do no, it no, while no, it's no, under no. warranty. They got trained, but like once those techs are gone, that's it. <laughs> You're never going to get support for that car. No chance. No, but the point you make about like just basic manual, like, engagement type stuff we went out and my buddy dom's c5 after we went out we went out in the c8 for like 45 minutes and we went out in 20 for 20 minutes in his car and we we're like oh this is more thrilling like There's you feel like that. yeah yeah and you know numbers say one thing right i i think about this a lot with electric cars i love electric cars and a lot of enthusiasts are like oh the death of the cars the, the enthusiast cars in the electric car i don't feel that way i feel an electric car and an automatic are pretty similar truthfully but I, but I do still have feel that manuals are just a little bit, mm-hmm. not, not a little bit, a lot more fun. And well, I think that, that electric cars will never replace that feeling for me. They are talking about some kind of electric assist in the NE Miata, but retaining a manual transmission. So I'd be totally game for a, a, an electric Miata. In the oh, stick yeah. be great. Can what I, a weird thing that would end up being. You know, there oh were hysterical. Out. Honda did a couple hybrid sticks. I've never driven one. I'd be very curious. The too. CRZ? CRZ? Yeah, yeah, the CRZ had one. The Insight, there was a stick Insight, and there, there was a stick Civic Hybrid, which... Oh, yeah. Those those oh, ones. yeah, when that first gen of, like... First gen. <laughs> the, the I, I drove a CRZ car. with the stick. Uh, <laughs> I had a blast in it. It was great. Really? Like, great car. Yeah. Like, I mean, 50 miles per gallon. And it's tiny. <laughs> like, it's... Yeah. With... Uh, but it's probably oh, way under-tired, I imagine. That's probably the oh, problem. Yeah. Only two seats. The They had, like placeholders in the back but they weren't oh, seats. really yeah huh. yeah it was supposed to be the, like a modern day crx but with you know hybrid like that the modern day would have right. a hybrid, like the nsx but it wasn't quite didn't have the same level of passion it, it also the looks were very really, it was, it only weighed 2600 pounds that's actually kind of surprising i thought it'd be heavier hybrid, with all that hybrid like stuff yeah it just, the problem was it yeah. just wasn't that powerful they made them for a while. The CRZ. The CRZ? Yeah. Didn't? Oh, God. Well, this is Honda's strategy. Honda comes out. Honda has five core products. And then they come out with weird stuff on the sides <laughs> that they do one generation of, and then, it, and then it is canceled. And I've never understood. The S2000, the Element, the Ridgeline, like the CRZ. There's all these Hondas that like they tried, and it didn't work. But the HRV, the CRV, the Odyssey, the Pilot, those are the yeah. core, those are the Civic. Those will okay. never go. It's like, this is our mainstream. And then we try all this dumb stuff, and it has never succeeded. Element <laughs> was Awesome. Element was great. It yeah. was great. But they gave um, it up, just like they so give up every little manual all wheel drive element is absolutely totally. killer. They the best, nice. the best thing about Element is they were designing it for males and 20s that were extreme sport enthusiasts and they end up selling to women's and their women in their 50s women's. and 60s. <laughs> I can't exactly speak. Right. They followed the Scion <laughs> model. That's, that's it is a great point. Although you know what's funny, I now see so many of those elements with those pop top things. They're really popular yeah. in California, and they are now being driven by the twenty year old oh, men that they envisioned. Yeah, those things on Expedition Portal go for like forty five grand. It's like <laughs> crazy talk. 
But well, it's, it's the thing about them is it's the only way to get that pop top deal and have a smallish vehicle unless you actually get a van again, which nobody realistically right. like they're, they're, they have no power and they're old and they have a million miles. Look yeah, and they're that. they're also astronomical in <laughs> price. Yeah, that's, that's right. really they're, cool. They're expensive too. So are those are those Sparco wheels, like those are Sparco sweet wheels too. Terras. I have Look those on my Subaru. Legit wheels and tires lifted. The problem was it still didn't have that real time four wheel drive was not the greatest four wheel drive, oh. it was, but it was better than nothing. It'll it'll handle a fire road though. Like it'll, yeah. it'll do fire yeah. anything. Will handle rear wheel drive or front wheel drive will handle handle fire road. <laughs> I know, but no. like where he's in a parking lot, like he's not like, going yeah. anywhere. Like, <laughs> that's the only place that, that can look be at used. that triangular regulatory. I love when automakers do the uh, regulatory stuff and make it cool, like that reflector on the front fender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, like the Raptor yeah. with its cool little three dot yellow lights because they had to do it because it was so wide. It cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love and now that. every guy with a Forerunner has them on the front of his truck. Oh, and every guy with F one fifty, that's like the hot F one fifty, yeah. Ugh. Which is so funny because it's a it's a regular like it's not supposed to be cool. People don't care. Right. They just they think it makes them. I've seen them on gladiators around here. It's like it's cheap. It's this wide, you know. Right, right. But I mean, a oh. gladiator could be pushing that width if you get some wheel spacers and some big enough tires. Like you could yeah. maybe get. What, <laughs> Dude, I if saw you go team. like full with Dana 60s and then wide tires, maybe. Hey, that's not above Jeep, guys. These, like, yeah, no, all these cars are so close to those width rules, too. 80 inches is not as insane as it used to be. Remember when we were kids and Hummer was like the, you'd see one and it was like, oh my God, this huge. is the craziest yeah. thing I've ever seen. Oh man, we had one for like three weeks because my dad's friend worked for GM and he would get like manufactured demos had like an H2 SUT and an avalanche ah. before they were like, you know, on the road. But yeah, the Hummer was like, couldn't believe it fit in our driveway. You yeah. know, right. now 80 inches wide is like, uh, okay, how wide is that Ram 3500 with the tow mirrors? Look at that thing. That was the most ridiculous car in the world at the time. And now it's like, they still look insane because they were just purely like squares. But cars look like this. Cars are this size. Like it's I not- I spent a summer coaching baseball uh, with a professional baseball player, and this was like his wife's vehicle. Was <laughs> and they had they had three boys, and it, so I, I don't know where they put them all because there are only like four seats. There were four seats, yeah. but, but everybody who bought the civilian ones would buy. There was a you could get an aftermarket seat to fit across that massive hump in the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you could get like three seats, three more seats yeah. in that massive <laughs> hump, so you could increase the seating capacity. <laughs> it I, makes me uh, think of Toyota Mega like, Cruiser interior. The Mega oh, Cruiser. Mega, give, that is literally my all-time <laughs> dream. I would give anything for one of those. That's your, your beach truck. That's your beach truck. Yeah, that would be so cool. But how, be so funny. The problem is, I hate cars. I hate personally owning cars that are like in your face, like egregious. Yeah. My, I always tell people my fleet of cars is the world's most expensive fleet of cars that people think is worth five grand. That's like my, <laughs> the old Defender people think is like worth, I have this old uh, Audi that nobody thinks is yeah. like a Cabrio. People are like, is this, you know, $20,000 car? That's my thing. And mm-hmm. the Mega Cruiser just looks so in your face. And but it's got a Toyota badge on the front. Yeah, but you look at it from any distance and it looks like a Hummer. That's true. It does. It does. But, but the... How- how baller a mega cruiser? <laughs> They're oh, expensive, though. People want big money for them. Yes, they do. It's not surprising. Toy- I mean, Toyota tax for something even more eclectic than what people get. You, you know, still put only tax get on. You still only get six. I'm counting what, seatbelts. Is that right? Yeah. You know those had oh, four wheels here. Ooh. And it was like pronounced. I mean, it looked like those quadrasteer trucks when they're like at full lock. Yeah, yeah, those were cool. Those I remember those. Um, the Sierra Denali's with quadra totally. steers and, and they, they had the little like yeah the, the they had the lights flare, they had yeah the, the fender flare lights <laughs> they so did, cool they did those quadra steers on suburbans too believe it or not i remember they had a 2500 suburban yep. with quadra steers it. and, and you can see the, the, the wheels are turned right there the rear yeah, yeah, the rear wheels yeah i would give anything for those huh. finding a left-hand drive civilian version is like the ultimate dream there's like zero they made very very few but God. okay so well and if you find a left-hand drive one it's six figures yeah, for sure. For Jesus. Sure. And a lot really? of them are military and the, I don't, the military ones don't have much. Building. Yeah. Yeah. Six okay. figures for sure. So Chris put a question in, in the show notes, which is what's your unobtainium in the four wheel drive world? 
So is it it's, that, or is there something that supersedes it's either that? that? It was the G cab until I got one. It's now it's either that or an LMO two. I would give anything for an LMO two, except the four hundred thousand dollars that they now cost. I remember yeah, when I first started so this whole thing, I like financed a used Ferrari. That was like one of my big things when I, that I like first got going with. And at the time, it was like that or an LMO two for ninety grand, and I chose the Ferrari. Oh and, no, uh, you had it. <laughs> LMO twos are now like 250 buys a crappy one. Um, I'll never have one, but, and they're terrible mm. to drive. Probably the worst tires and, and tires once every 10 years. Right. Although you can put super swampers on them and it's okay. People just want the original tire. What? <laughs> they want the understand. Pirelli. I have had, I had this conversation recently with an owner of one and he's oh, like, yeah, just super put swampers. Super swampers on them and like life goes on. They're just not. Uh, you know, that, that works. screams Rambo. <laughs> Isn't that thing so cool? It, well yes but also it's oh, it's no. very in your face <laughs> the most in your face of anything i'll, I'll never have one of those but Some, God, somebody it. putting aftermarket wheels on one is the worst i uh, guess maybe it's an optional wheel pull up pull up the lmo2 american had a different wheel design which i always actually liked a little bit better it looked a little more modern they called it American. Yeah, there wasn't a there was a version specifically. Des- yeah, that's the American. There was okay. a version later production car specifically designed for America because there were there were emissions requirements. Unsurprisingly, okay. Lambo wasn't doing great with emissions requirements at this time, and so they 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 got their act together and they were able to get one it certified for sale in the U.S. And just- <laughs> Look at the tiny amber side marker. Yeah, <laughs> they just bought that off the Countach. They were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh God, we're gonna, okay. So we're going to start playing a and game. The, and the mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> it's also from a Countach. They're just like, yeah, hey, this is what we're just making. Stick it on. Are the, uh, the door hinges are right. mounted on the outside. I never noticed that. Yeah. Oh. Truly horrible car. One truly probably the worst car I've ever driven, like in terms of driving experience. But if the door hinges are mounted on the outside, does that mean we can take them off? <laughs> Theoretically, <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> and the, okay. the window switches were mounted in the center. So, like, you probably are Ooh. just disconnecting a. Yeah, probably. Okay. That's my next Google probably. search right now. Um, LMO2 with no doors. Chris, we're going to start playing a game. If at some point you want one of your kids to come on called Real or Grand Theft Auto Rendering. And that's the first <laughs> one. Like, because who would ever imagine that was a real vehicle? Especially if you told people it's made by Lamborghini, no one would believe it. If you rolled up somewhere in that and be like, oh, "This is a Lambo," people would be like, "You built this yourself." Mm-hmm. Yep, it's like something Not like Lamborghini. What was that documentary about the guy that built a tank? It's like, well, who's where's his brother? <laughs> right, <laughs> this, that is this. Yeah. So there was funny. a wagon version. Yeah, but they only made like four of those, or something. I would that would be cool. That would be really cool. So that's got to be worth seven figures. Oh my god, I totally forgot. I saw CTSV wagon at the show on Sunday in. A purple that I had never seen. That is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Good fucking God. <laughs> that looks like the Cybertruck's like horrible offspring. That looks like a, it looks like a hearse or an ambulance. That's a hearse is where yeah. I was thinking. Where, why like, is it parked next to a bunch of 50s cars? What is this? Yeah. I don't know. It's what is going we're, on. We're, it's a car no show. Car. Wait, no, I want to, I take back everything I've just said. The, the off-roader that I, that is my unobtainium off-roader that I want more than anything in the world. The car that I want more than anything in the world is the Bentley Dominator, which was the SUV that the Sultan of Brunei commissioned. I have looked this thing up before. Years. There were only 11 made. They were all made for him. I would literally give not anything, but I would pay more than anybody else, I bet, for a Bentley Dominator. I am obsessed with this vehicle. Deeply obsessed. No shame in saying I've never heard of that. Oh, I. when did I look this? I. It might have been from a Slack discussion, Doug. <laughs> I looked look this, this thing. Look at this beautiful, beautiful vehicle. <laughs> They based, it was a it was a P thirty eight Range Rover underneath, and they yeah. just bodied it because oh, the, the Sultan wanted a Bentley right. SUV, and it was like, well, we don't. That's not a. <laughs> that's not a thing. We don't but, do those but yet. But if you pay us enough, we'll figure it out, and they did. So everybody who's mad that the Bentayga is their first SUV is wrong. That's right, and in fact, when they were making the Bentayga, Bentley had the Sultan send them back Dominators so they could check out like how they did it. Um, and they're the, almost all of the current pictures of the Dominator come from the, being loaded onto an airplane in like 2013 or 2000. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> oh during, my god, that thing I is heinous. It's, any, it's heinous, it's a terrible, so and it must be horrible, right? You got to assume some it was a Range Rover Bentley combo in the 90s. It must have been, you know, wait, but, hold on, I gotta get a better picture of it because 
there is a resemblance to the Bentayga there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I can't place what it well, I, is. I, is it just like the greenhouse or I think just like the general presence of it. There's a lot of Bentayga in that car. I agree with that. Oh, the, the front end's like the same. It well, had those rally the lights in the bumper. Too. Yeah. The Cullinan's yeah. super similar front end to now which the would be the Rolls Royce color. The problem with the Dominators is they were they were all the all the Sultan cars are right hand drive. So even if those things ever escape, I don't want to put up with that. Yeah, that, that'll be five hundred thousand dollars to convert to left hand drive. Right. It's like a bespoke <laughs> like, like the con, it's, you could never get it done. But God, I would give anything for that. Oh. Look at that beauty. You can see the P38 Range Rover in that. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> like, look at that horrible tailgate. Like, what was the concept there? <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> they don't even have a rear wiper. It looks like the oh, taillights yeah. there are not. It like, doesn't rain in Brunei. We're okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disastrous vehicle. Plus, oh, you got to assume they made these wheels to fit the Range Rover bolt pattern. They're not other Bentley wheels. What so. I'd give anything for that car. The Sultan of Brunei also had a wagonified yeah. Bentley. I don't know. Yeah. Is it a, not a Mulsanne? I don't know any shit about Bentley. Is it the Java Dominator? There was it's the Bentley Java was a whole other thing. He was yellow. commissioned. You know, in 98, 99, he, he ordered 25% of all Rolls Royce and Bentley. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the other one that I found with my Dominator <laughs> search. Look at this beautiful Oof. thing. That's a, that's like somebody stepped on an SC430. Yeah, that's a heinous car. That one still gets spotted. There are Brunei car spotter Instagrams, um, and they see the Sultan occasionally driving some of these crazy things, but never the Dominator, which I don't blame him, you know? No. <laughs> I kind of blame him if he ordered 11 of them and never drives. <laughs> well, two of them are yellow, so obviously he's not going to drive those. Uh, that thing is terrible. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be nice to have Sultan money, though, and just be like, I don't accept... The, the vehicles that your company built. <laughs> so you have to make me my own. <laughs> Here's what I want. I mean, that's their business model now, all of the companies. Yeah. It's like, okay, Let's so how much money sample. do you have? Yeah. I mean, paint the sample at the base level. Yeah. But like, yeah. Well, now Porsche is doing the special wishes thing where they'll do like three or four a year. They're just like, tell us what you want and we'll try to make it work. It's wild. I want, can, I would like Subaru to do that with an STI engine and a Crosstrek, please. Why is there not a more powerful Crosstrek? Because the people that buy them don't need more power and should like, not be driving with more power. <laughs> but like the Ascent has power. Oh. It's like very competitive in that segment. The Crosstrek, it's not even that it's like, it's, it's not even that like I want a fast one. Why not just oh. give it as much power as I can escape? I don't understand. Yeah. Or just take the engine that's in all of the other Subarus, <laughs> the turbo. Oh, yeah. The, well, the engine in the Outback, the Ascent the, engine, the Outback engine, the new WRX engine. What about the BRZ? It has 230 horsepower. That would be perfect for that. Like, that would, would be, be totally fine. That'd be crazy. And that's the same engine as the Ascent. Like, I don't understand. That's still NA, right? It's, yeah. It's NA in the BRZ and it's turbo in the Ascent. That's the only difference. They just, right. yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, we've been, you know, begging them for this for five years. The problem is that everybody who says they're going to buy one, wouldn't actually buy one because it, it would be 35 or forty thousand dollars they build the engine already like they it, 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 the cost can't be substantial you know like i get they wouldn't sell a lot of them but what's the what's the how hard could it be you know? right well there you go subaru wish list come on it's like they're, they're literally assembled like you just got to put the engine in the parts bin, guys. Like you already have what the engines. Mean? You have the engine, so it's not like you're developing anything here. I, I don't even know that there would be regulatory costs. You're selling the engine in other vehicles. Like there's yeah. not that much to do here. Super would, such a conservative sure. company. They really are. Is they're it so conservative? The only thing I can think is like if there's a, other emission stuff they have to have room for in the ascent that they wouldn't have room for in the smaller but vehicle. But that right. seems dumb. Yeah, can't be that. <laughs> just but, yeah. For a Somebody's company gonna... based in Philly, they don't take a lot of risks. It's kind of surprising. <laughs> I, 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 just wish, I just wish that they would do a little bit more in, in a lot of ways. But, I mean, I still don't get why there wasn't a more powerful BRZ. That, that still doesn't. But mm -hmm. now we have one, so it's okay. Now we have one. Have, and it's have, a uh, 30 horsepower bump? Yeah, but that was enough, I think. Yeah. It's more about where that dip was in the, in the power band. Yeah. Um, have you guys seen the fender flyers on the new wrx oh, 
I'm behind. You're behind. You're still on BRZ. Uh, yeah, I was, I was <laughs> hunting way, for BRZ. I think BRZ. the new BRZ looks great. I, that, yes. I think it's like way better. The old one, I think, looked too much like a kind of a cheap economy car. I think that this new one felt looks like it. Nice. I get. I I will premise this with I like this. It looks like an orca whale to me. Some for some reason, like I just feel like I don't <laughs> like a whale <laughs> like moving like the yeah. front end. Has uh, yeah. flowing, flowing I, bit. But again, it's a very happy orca whale. Get I like it. it. I I really like it. I, yeah, but I, I think it's still an improvement over the last one. But yeah, the WRX is. There's some stuff going on there. Yeah, certainly some, some stuff. Were made. I need it's a, a side shot. <laughs> it's the Outback and Forester Wilderness yeah. School of Fender Flare Design, which is close your eyes and pretend there's like <laughs> sideways graph paper. <laughs> You're the first person I've heard say that, but that was my first thought too. It actually looks like they were like, they wanted to make a wilderness version of the WRX and that's what this is. Because the Outback Fucking Wilderness amazing. is a heinous vehicle, but I kind of respect them for it. But like, this is, why did they do it for the WRX? Like that's not their... That's if that's plan. the direction they're going with their like corporate styling, it's going to scare a lot of people off. Right, I'm over here saying Subaru's a conservative company. They've gone <laughs> yeah, right. But actually, I, I see a lot of those outback wildernesses. They must have been. It must be a reasonable hit. The, the problem seems to be only to me with the only with the WRX. Mm. It's going to be a tough sell. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. It it doesn't look as bad from that angle, but if you look at it. Doesn't totally profile. Totally profile. Yeah, or rear. Just, rear, 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 three rear. quarters is a tough look for that car. The BRZ tail lights do look good on it, though. I'll give them that. Um, and they're all orange. The other mistake was releasing the press photos in orange. They could have really tapered the whole thing and made it not be so insane. But they were like, let's draw attention to the crazy contrast between this bright color and our ridiculous fender flare. They got have a dark, a dark gray. One. They have a dark gray that's the same color as the fender flare. Right. So look at that. That doesn't really look all that bad. With the uh, kind of looks good. With that, with that color, I don't know why they chose orange. It's such a mistake. It's not even. It's not. In, it doesn't look like a new orange either. It looks like the same orange that's been on the cross track for. 10 yeah, years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight years right. or something. That's right. But I don't know. Uh, Three quarter. WRX Wilderness would be killer, though. That would be so much fun. Well, that's like, the cross track you're talking about. That's the cross track that you're saying you want. It would be cool. And I think people would buy it. Look at off roaders right now. Everybody wants every off roader that exists. They want like cool, fun off roaders. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Overlanding, off roading is like. It's it. Like, and Subaru should own that world. Like, they have those people. And a lot of those people, I think, are abandoning Subaru because they're not really making cars like that. Mm -hmm. If Subaru had a Forerunner, I really think it would sell like crazy. I really, really, really do. I was going to look something up. I wanted to look up Forerunner sales year over year because I looked up uh, Wrangler sales year over year and they sold 240,000 Wranglers in 2018. Insane. And they're already at like 170 or 180 for this year. I feel like I looked this up not long ago and I feel like Forerunner had its best year either last year or the year before ever. Good Lord. Just... Good car, bad car. Yeah. For, car, for how car. old a vehicle? Yeah, it came out when? 2010 was the first model year. And you know, there was actually a four cylinder fifth gen uh, yeah. runner at one point. Like what, a year or two? But like none of them. If Is you find the one, rear drive only it. ones. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. That's my, that's my favorite part is still letting people know that they have rear wheel drive only forerunners. So 2018, they sold 140,000 forerunners. They sold 131 in 19, 129 last year, and they've already sold 100,000 this year. With all the and shortages. Yeah, I mean, like, they're, they're probably going to make more money on it this year because everything's going for... <laughs> their <laughs> their margins. Yeah, it's margins are crazy. Nuts. It's because that's... Toyota needed better margins. Toyota probably wishes this had happened. All these old Toyota SUVs, they probably wish the whole COVID thing had happened a few years ago. Like the, they're redesigning them all now. It's like, damn, what a what a waste. Why did we bother redesigning the Tundra? We could have gotten a few years. <laughs> <laughs> we we're coming it, right? out with a new car. We can't even sell it. Like uh, this, we could have let this go on a few more years. Uh, uh, it's like, um, you drove the Frontier. I haven't driven the new. No, Nissan, Nissan. Nissan won't work with me. They're the only brand that won't work. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you even said nice things about the Pathfinder. No, well, I've been pretty. I've been pretty. Oh man, I get that's it. funny. I, they won't even talk to me. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> I don't mind. I got it. I I work with a lot of dealers, and so it's like whatever. It's mm. They get it. They get the cars. But the, what do you think of the new Frontier? I have it. 
next. So I have, so they take the C8 on Monday, swap it for the Yukon Denali with the diesel, mm. which very interesting. And then that gets swapped for the new frontier. Mm. So it's like a rotation of brave new world, you know, diesel GM SUV, which yeah, there was a diesel GM SUV. They had that stupid turbo diesel and 6.6 NA diesel in the nineties. Yeah, that's right. And, that's uh, and this is the first new frontier since, Oh, six. Listen to this. Oh, the, six. Front, the current frontier predates Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Instagram and TikTok and and, and yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Oh. I'm. I know I'm getting old because I'm like starting to go. Now. Who was president when? Yeah. That vehicle came out. <laughs> Bush. Who cares? Bush. That <laughs> it <old>. was Bush. <laughs> that old. Jesus. Oh my Think God, Bush. Like yeah, the, the current frontier it almost predates Facebook. Facebook came out I think in 05 and the frontier came out. It, it, it was it was, it was like five. It was like a it was like this eight month or nine month difference or something like that. Think so, about that. So, I mean, speaking of vehicles that should exist, why why isn't Nissan doing an Xterra? Oh my god, I had a fight with a buddy. I probably shouldn't say that. I had a fight with a buddy of mine who works at Nissan about this, and he's like, it would be a niche vehicle. I'm like, are you out of your mind? You Ranger? know, there's, there's a global one. There's an Xterra in China. Google. There, I don't remember what it's called. It might still be called Xterra. They sell a global forerunner competitor Xterra in Asia. Not, not like X Trail Xterra. No, there is a literal Xterra that replaces. Oh, sorry, got it. I gotta look it up. Did? Okay, cool. No, yeah, I got it. What is X Trail? X Trail is based on X-trail's like the road. a global. It's just the road. Oh really? Didn't now it used it to be is. like yeah, a it didn't global? Used to be. It used to be a little more off roady, but that's yeah. it's now just a rebadged road. It was like they, a, it, they just call it the Terra. Look at this! This exists <laughs> in Asia today. Yeah. How are yeah, you I not mean, selling this in the United States? I think it's one of the craziest things that exists in the car industry today. Yeah, but Ford also sells that weird little the thing. Everest. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't Chevy sell something that's yeah, yeah kind of blazery in name blazer, actually i think our our blazer is a catastrophe or, yeah, <laughs> it's a national worse. disaster our our blazer might be worse than nissan not selling this in the united states <laughs> 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 oh my god every time i see one i'm like <laughs> like oh look an equal oh <laughs> well you can't blame gm they they had no known how could they have possibly known ford bring back the bronco and gets more hype than everybody in the world jeep is selling the wrangler and they're selling one hundred eighty thousand a year how could chevy have possibly known that they're selling the blazer as an off-road or idea there's no yeah, the, indication of that in the, the market forerunner does terribly forerunner does horribly <laughs> yeah I, so I is know. is armada the world's version of patrol now yeah okay mm-hmm. we just don't get a cool name yeah, it's too bad. Because they didn't cool name. the Armada name before and they just kind of kept keep it. I like Patrol better. They're just both... be happy. The, the Rogue Sport is, is not called the Kashkai. Kashkai? Kashkai? So weird. <laughs> like every every time we start to talk about like uh Asian minivans and like like what's available in Australia, like the oh, oh Joel. Crap. Well, well, yeah, when I talk to Joel, it's like the Oh, I know which one you're going to talk. You're going to say, and I, what is it? Velfire. I, say it again. The Velfire. Is that the? That's the Lexus, right? That's there's the Lexus. Lexus. There's the that's Alphard. Japan. The, the Alphari. Alphard and the Velfire are the two. The, the I just wish the Velfire didn't share the grill. Like it's, it didn't have. Oh man, that's way too large. I love when I open large images and then my screen goes. No, no, no. I'm going to shrink it down for you. I am slightly disappointed that Volkswagen is giving their vehicles less exciting names, less difficult to pronounce names now. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing for so many. Look at this. Whoa, hand. that's the Velfire. <laughs> I love that. We actually rode one of those in Tokyo, and it was fantastic. But not a that was there. There were Toyota that, versions. Dude, God, what was that? That's got to have the most percentage of grill for the, like that takes up the front end of anything yeah that's so true it's like all grill and windshield and nothing else <laughs> there's nothing <laughs> that's all you get uh, that, that thing's almost like a, a cab over too it, so it like, basically is it looks like it, yeah, it was forward. a lot of those asian minivans are basically that for to maximize like space right right man do you remember a few years ago when jeep did the fc concept yeah. and everybody's yeah. like come on just do it like, 
I want there's got to be there's got to be tons of safety issues like safety there's regulations. No chance that would pass. Yeah, you it's gotta, like that. I like the old race cars. Like you are the crumple zone. Right. Right. It's the yeah, best. I mean, that's the real reason why they can't bring back McLaren F1, you know, because those side seats are considered front seats, so they'd have to have airbags, and that's not. Mm-hmm. Look at this thing. How? Cool oh, that's so fucking good. I saw someone make it into like a van rendering where it was just like van oh, through the back God. of it. Those like, things God, scare yeah. me. So cool. You can't send me that. They, those things look like they stalk children at night. Not oh, the, the van renderings I sent you the other day. Uh, <laughs> I'll give that guy a shout out. What was that guy's uh, Instagram? <laughs> that, that the Ram TRX one really just didn't sit well with me. Oh, the dude who does the cab over van renderings. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Uh, none of those. Someone just did a like a Defender, a, like a lifted, nice, like green old the new Defender. I was like, Dan, that would be so cool. Like he did an 18 so version funny. out of a modern Yukon. Like, <laughs> look at that. Oh my That's God. Awesome. That actually, okay, that works. That works. I think it you works. You guys have great. obviously seen the uh, the nose swaps, all the yeah. I love those. nose swaps. Those are so good too. Like, you know we're finally in the good age of Photoshop. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. Everything was sick. You know, you know what? Uh, I an Instagram that I really like. Have you guys found the worst spec Instagram? This is one of my all time favorites because all anybody wants to talk about with these exotic cars is how good the spec is. Like, oh, look mm-hmm. at the stitching and the piping and all this BS. There's a guy who just calls out <laughs> people for having bad specs. That's amazing. <laughs> His profile pictures the Ronald McDonald Ferrari. Oh. <laughs> He said that on his on his profile at one point he said Mansory, the company that like modded mods Bentleys and stuff. They they blocked him like instantly. It oh, says yeah. blocked by Mansory and many more. <laughs> All That's cool. Hate him because he calls out these terrible specs. But like scroll down, like the specs are oh. terrible, and people deserve to be called Dude, out. <laughs> but people talk about how good a spec is on everything. Like That's all people even on say, the like oh what are you and FRS to, like or you know a Cayman. Like, oh, right. but what spec is it? Which, what did you get? You know, PSD, M, Q, R, whatever, you know? Right. That's, that's, all, that's all Porsche people want to talk about anymore. It's like the spec, the options, the colors that you chose, the, mm-hmm. the deviated stitching. And I'm just so tired of that. I remember when Porsches were for drivers. But this guy, I'm so obsessed with this. I love this dude. He just straight calls out people with these exotic cars. Like, look at that GT3 RS. Look at those wheels. <laughs> and all these people hate him. And often he gets comments like, Hey, that isn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, I really don't think that's so bad. And it's like, no, it's so bad. I've definitely terrible. seen worse than that. <laughs> like, it's not good, but that there guy was deeply deserves to be called out. Look at that pink McLaren. I mean, there was... um, there was a Ford GT at Caffeine and Carburetors on well, Sunday not... with huge red wheels, red car, huge red, like like 2007 Pin My Ride wheels. See if I can find a picture. Is of that it. an entirely pink Alcantara interior? And it looks problem, like there's a fuzz to it. Yeah, I think so. And the problem is these oh. people will do this because like people are pay. That person probably paid a hundred thousand dollars for that just the interior on that, that car. Maybe. That person fantasized that car after watching Too Fast Too Furious, the S two thousand and Too Fast Too Furious. Oh, that's two thousand. Dude, the I best part that, is the photos are from McLaren Charlotte. That thing's for sale, probably. That thing is for <laughs> sale. Good luck. Uh, for just luck. Two, 270. No chance. No chance. I'm never going to be able to find pictures of this Ford GT, but it was like, it was on rims. When I worked at Porsche, we had a guy order um, a manual Cayenne with no options, literally not one, except one option, sunroof delete. And I was working at the corporate office and I happened to find this and build in the system and i told the dealer like you got to change this right now and he said because it's going to go into build like they don't need to schedule anything like that thing gets built right away and he said no he said the customer wanted it this way and he said he said it's a 49,995 build and we took a twenty-five thousand dollar deposit <laughs> oh shit because we know that if he bails <laughs> we're You'd never, never sell. selling this Single and that's what i think of every time i see that like that pink mclaren you got to assume the dealer was like listen you're buying this right. <laughs> like oh my there's God. no bailing on this order That's those it. um those first gen manual transmission gts cayennes have been coming up in conversation more and more yeah. those are those are oh going to be gosh. big money it's funny because they weren't the greatest cars but they now are like all rare porsches now they have this kind of mystery to them you know right it's I'm the allure the rest, 
the rest of the evening just browsing. This. <laughs> Work back oh, is the greatest no. thing in the world. And sometimes the owners come on and they're like, I ordered it this way because whatever. And it's a throwback to whatever. And it's like, dude, it's yellow over pink. It, there's no justifying. It. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for somebody to go on. I'm colorblind. <laughs> like, <laughs> You'd have to be. Look at that. Look at that taste. That's an abomination. Thing. That one was from Shanghai. Oh, I would have, I was assuming that, that tracks or, Florida. or Miami. Yeah. More Miami. Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that good. No, uh, all my friends do is send this Instagram back and forth. Like, look at this one today. And the so people bad. defending it is just always like the greatest thing in the world. Like there's a it. lot of Lambos on here. <laughs> that adds up. Yep. That, oh, yeah. One plus one equals two. Oh man. Okay. That's funny. All right, so last few things. Uh, Chris, you have anything else now that I'm looking at those? We kind of ran we, all over the we, place. We did tonight. a lot. I was going to let Doug yeah. do plugs. I'm like, what's yeah. that? <laughs> I got a YouTube channel. <laughs> we got a website called Cars and Bids. You can, buy, you can buy interesting and weird vehicles. We got a NASCAR for sale right now. I guess that won't be for sale when this airs. Yeah. We did just have a guy submit a drivetrainless NASCAR, though, so we'll see. Okay. Did he did cool. he um, include the phrase roller? Like, yeah, I hope so. You, you know, you, you want him, you want him to. Uh, I'm, I'm in reserve. I don't know how to put a market price on that. Yeah, I might have suggested that crazy H two that went on. Was that yesterday? I, I might notice, have. Did you notice that that's a pickup conversion? That's not an SUV. Yes, yeah. it's very stretched. But yeah. I, I might have suggested it for the. Uh, ATV rider, UTV driver, shop truck. Oh man! <laughs> I actually, I, I, I'm actually disappointed that it's lifting on it because I think that would be super cool if it was just a straight build, like an just a regular H2, but with a serious pickup bed. They never made it, right? And I think that would be really, really cool. I mean, that thing has like fifty thousand dollars in suspension on it. Yeah, yeah, it does. It it's does. absolutely absurd. But like, um, how cool would that be? Is like just a straight up custom H2 that just was an H2 but with a truck bed? Yeah, I mean, H2s are coming yeah. around. You know, yeah. they're not as wildly egregious as they used to be. And I, I, nice ones are hard to find. We sell them for real money. Yeah. There's somebody near my parents' house who has a, a blue, you know, that like steel blue. Yeah. GM did on everything in the mid 2000s. They have a steel yep. blue H2 SUT and it is perfect. And like, it, it'll probably sell for more than they paid for it when they yeah. go to sell it. Yeah. I'm sure I'm, we're always stunned how much it. money they bring, but a lot of those were exported because they were really hot in other markets and a lot of them were crashed or not treated well. Look at these wonderful cars. This Look is my that. favorite Ooh, part of cars and bids is going from 07 Lexus LX down to the Pajero, back into the Acura, to the 91 Land Cruiser on the side. Mm-hmm. This, my, this was my grand dream. Scroll. There's always weird crap. And I always... I, it is. I love... I really do love bringing a trailer even still, but you know things have gotten more expensive there. And I the, the concept of being able to do all manner of weird stuff mm-hmm. here there on the right you got a ferrari 328 with a fourteen thousand dollars service next to a b16a2 swap 94 civic hatch you just, yeah. that is the variety that i want in my I, with a 99 lx like, i will tell you that so i get one prelude i get the daily emails and it does genuinely bright my mornings when i look through the daily emails <laughs> and then i usually laugh at the prices and i'm like well, well there's the house down there. you know it's but it's insane it, it's it crazy. And, you know, people blame me. They're like, oh, God, you created this. And it's not. This is the market right now. Everything's no, insane. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. Like, we're waiting for the other yeah. shooter pilots. Everyone is. Um, yeah. And I actually, I worked at a Volvo dealership until March and helped sell a, a, a V60 Polestar wagon on your site. Like, Oh, yeah. I remember. Right yeah, yeah. after it launched. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it, great process, you know. And we've done, I mean, we've done really well with wagons. I think that a lot of my people have come over and BMW yeah. wagons and Volvo wagons and Mercedes wagons we've killed with. They know. Yeah. And wagons are just hot enthusiast cars. We sold an AMG wagon today with no reserve. We sold an RS6 wagon yesterday. Oh, that reminded me. I wanted to go back. I, I saw a purple CTSV wagon on Sunday, and I don't know. Maybe it's like 10 of them. God. Those are so cool. There's I have a 97 RAV4 on here right now. I love oh, look this. Look at that. Like, pull that up. That oh, is that the thing's 97 crazy. RAV4 you will ever see. Now, I think it's a two-wheel drive. That, but it is um, a Ram, yes. 
that's that's what the word time or phrase time capsule was invented for okay look at this Uh, manual one owner that's a brilliant car okay the name of the color on the ctsv is majestic plum (laughs) yeah that's it feels like it should be dodge but yeah no dodge would be full rav4 tell me those first gen rav4s aren't starting to get a little appealing the there's a two door one near me that I see every now and then, and I'm kind of like, maybe they maybe. remind me. <laughs> maybe they remind me of uh, Suzuki X90s. Yeah, yeah, and they did convertible Rav fours. There was a hardtop or a convertible two door in that first. Same day. thing with Kia Sportage of the similar vintage. That oh, God, I would give anything for a convertible Sportage to review. Sportage. I forgot about that guy. Yeah, the, the one I have seen recently is such a horrible pile of crap. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> there are no nice ones of those left, but they existed yeah. and they existed with manuals and they were body on frame. If I remember right, they're probably, like it, it, it was like geo tracker, Chevy tracker, which I think was body on frame. Cause you can lift them. You can definitely lift those. Yeah. Oh uh, man. This is um, definitely question. the most amount of time that I've spent talking about two door SUVs in a long time. <laughs> you now own one, dude. You're going to have to do it more. I do. This is my second. <laughs> yeah. So, Oh no! What's uh? What, what's the pinnacle of two door SUV? Mercedes Benz G five hundred yeah. Cabriolet. <laughs> How about XJ Cherokee four liter manual with triangle cutouts and the back chopped off? <laughs> Hard you mess. You mimic a G, a G <laughs> with an XJ. Oh man, that's possible. I. Uh, yeah. mm. It would be just as good. I love the X-rays are so good looking. That would be so cool. You it's hard to make an X-ray bad looking. Challenge accepted. (laughs) Oh man. All right. Well, it's a late o'clock on the East Coast. Yeah, you're 11 something. Yeah. So uh, you can rate review the show on iTunes. You can like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can also like subscribe to Doug's uh, Doug DeMuro and then more Doug DeMuro. Yeah, indeed. Well, channels. <laughs> uh, you can follow Doug Instagram, Facebook. It's at Doug DeMuro. You still have Twitter, right? Yeah, I love Twitter. It's the best. <laughs> what everybody says. It's the only one I don't know. I, oh, I've, yeah. Yeah. I've been slowly turning away from Twitter because I found myself getting angrier and angrier. And angrier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, just, I don't do any politics. I just literally just cars, cars. I need to re-curate my feed. Right. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, so follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV writer. Ross is at no, not like the one from friends. I'm at overlanding dad. And that's it. That's the show. Thank that's you. Doug. Show? Yeah. Thank you for having me. Doug, thank you. Appreciate it.